What's up, y'all? Welcome to the 1 a.m. podcast. It's your boy Mo Knows. Uh, here with my co host Rashad Milligan and Jelani Easley. You know, so we we back at it for another pod. Uh, with this one, we're going to start it off with a little talk on college football. So y'all see the games this weekend? Yeah, I just uh, I just saw that uh, Florida State they uh, they played Notre Dame and they missed like a they made a like a fifty yard field goal to go to overtime and then missed I forget how much it was like a way a way shorter field goal to win the game in overtime and if uh, Notre Dame won so dang yeah uh, your Bulldogs though they uh they beat Clemson time <laughs> <seven. laughs> <Or 10, laughs> <10, 3. laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was an interesting game to watch, man. Cause I couldn't tell if Georgia was really elite as you know Kirby Smart threw out there, or if Clemson just ain't what they used to be. Cause they was they was out there struggling. The DJ kid, I can't. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Uh, ukulele, whatever, like. He, he, I don't know. He's not, he wasn't looking all that, man. Especially in comparison, I'm watching Bryce Young for Alabama. Man, that kid is good. Like, he made himself the Heisman favorite, I feel, after this weekend. And, but, like, he got good throws, like, decision-making. It was, it was, you know, it was good to watch. The, the NIL boys. Uh, right. Who who are they? Bryce, Bryce Young, DJ from Clemson, uh, boy from Miami, De'Aaron King, yeah, uh, Matt Corral. Th- those the those the NIL boys. Mm-hmm. If they would have had that back when like Tebow or like Matt Leiner or Reggie Bush was playing, they would have made so much money. Like, oh, but but that's what we were saying, Jelani. With, with uh, who's the biggest face of college athletics right now? And I was like, Paige Beckers probably is the biggest face. Because there's no, like, Bryce Young is going to be probably at this time in December. He's probably going to be the biggest at that time. But, like, before the season, early season, like, it's Paige Beckers, man. So, but, but like, you, because it's not like how it used to be with the larger than life, you know, college stars, figures, and stuff like that in college football. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely feel uh Bryce Young, he gone as a you know, when we spoke about it in the earlier episode, uh how once sports start, then you know, somebody new gonna emerge. And I think give it a couple weeks or I don't know Alabama's upcoming schedule. So but next big big game, I think he's gonna be able to like, you know, make his name something, you know, known. Nick Saban sold his soul to the devil. Him and Tom Brady <laughs> both. They both sold their souls for endless championships and success. Because it's just, it, it, you know, it's crazy. Like, it doesn't I, – I don't want to ever accuse somebody of doing anything illegal, of, like, paying players. I mean, it's not illegal anymore, but, like, guys paying players and stuff like that under the table. But it does – it is kind of wild to me that the the center of, you know, the, the school that all the players want to go to is in Alabama, like Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Yeah. Like, I, I just want to know, like, what is recruiting tactics? How is he, like, what spells is he putting on these kids to make them want to come down there? Because we're going on about 12 years now of them just dominating college football. Well, I, I look at it like this, Jelani. Tua, he he came to Alabama. Like, he was from Hawaii, right? Tua was from Hawaii or something like that? Yeah. To Tuscaloosa, and, Alabama. And But look at this. But check this out. His little brother, right, when he came came up through that little pipeline, his little brother was going to school in Birmingham at, like, one of the best schools in Birmingham, and they lived in a gated community and everything like that. Hold on now. So you're telling me this quarterback in Hawaii all of a sudden just get all this money moved to the most affluent neighborhood in Birmingham, Alabama, and a family in a gated community, a nice car, the mama got a job, daddy got a job, the son going to one of the best schools in the state. You telling me, wait, hold on now. I mean, I don't know. That that's what we know. 
You know what I'm saying? So just imagine the stuff we don't know. I mean, so so like you say, I mean, that, that, that tells you enough as is. Saving got the connections. You're made, man. Facts. Remember, um, I, I, I went down a LeBron binge a couple of weeks ago. Remember in, in high school when LeBron had the, what was it, the Hummer? He had the Hummer in high school and stuff, and he took it out yeah. on the loan because of what he expected to make a couple of years later right. or a couple of months later. Do you think, like, the kids in Alabama, are they allowed to do that or, like, how, you know how that works? I'm not sure, but I know uh, they probably know every loophole known to man to be able to game the system. You know what I mean? Like, a ain't no loopholes anymore, like you said. Oh yeah, they Nick yeah, could basically yeah. be like he could pay some some like car dealership in the in the area to pay off the players, and like I'll give you this money, you get it to them. You know what I mean? It's ways now they could do that. Uh, all the car dealerships in Alabama gonna have an Alabama player on, on the little poster posted up. <laughs> That that's they uh they little endorsement deal, right? Yeah, y'all. Uh, any other games y'all catch over the weekend? I I watched a little LSU and uh, Notre Dame. Shoot, Man, like uh, UCLA. About... Uh, <laughs> nah, unless you play. Uh, yeah, UCLA. yeah, yeah. That man Max Johnson, he he threw the uh. He threw the no look. He he. <laughs> you know, when, when he was like uh, impressed, I never seen that, and like it didn't get picked off. And I saw that I was like, oh, okay, all right, all right. It was LSU, UCLA. What what did I say? Notre Dame. My bad. I had Notre yeah, Dame. Yeah, yeah. I said it twice too, but uh, UCLA. And, uh, <laughs> but I mean, UCLA they, they did that thing in the fourth quarter and whatnot. But I mean, LSU, dog, it had me thinking about our boy, man, Eric Gilbert, man. I hope Eric is doing all right. Still yeah. not playing for UGA or whatever. Um, I don't know what's going on with bro, but I hope whatever it is, he figures it out. Gets on the field, man, because he don't need to be wasting these years of his life, you know. he's. I don't want to sound shallow, but, you know, he's kind of too good of an athlete to uh, you know, kind of just let his prime go to waste like that. Right. Nah, that's a fact. Yeah, I definitely hope he can turn that around. Cause, yeah, he was man. I thought he was gonna be the greatest thing out of Marietta. He, he was about to be the the best, like probably in contention for the greatest tight end ever. I mean, yeah. well, you know, Kyle Pitts is supposed to be that now, but you know, sick it to Kyle Pitts or third Gronkowski, Kyle Pitts, and and Eric Gilbert and Tony Gonzalez. That's a the gold, the Mount Rushmore tight ends. Right. How, how you want to disrespect, uh, what was his name? Uh, Uncle Shay Shay, what you call himself? <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> all right, so, all right, all right. That's the question, though. So y'all got Shannon Sharp or Antonio Gates at that five spot? Shannon Sharp, just because you got to think about, like, the era they played. He was really the first tight end that was, like, almost um, – like a wide receiver playing tight end, you know what I mean? He kind of he kind of elevated the game. Yeah, tight ends weren't sexy back then, and he got rings. No putting it. <laughs> I think and Shannon Sharp got rings. Like Antonio Gates, like he stayed with the Chargers. All I mean, but years. can you say that about a tight end? Like it's not like quarterback, you know? I mean, but he was he was a big part of every team. That he won the championship with. T.O. don't have any rings. Yeah, I mean, like T.O. is a great player, but his talent was just on another level, though. So that, and then he also has the records, just like Shannon Sharp also has the records. So that's why I feel you got to put him, or he used to have the records. I feel like I don't know what he, what records he hold now. But okay, okay, I see that. I see that. So. All right, so rankings, current rankings right now, tight end. I say number one, would you guys say Gronk or would you say Gonzalez? Because Gonzalez Gronk. was the number one hands down, and then Gronk won a couple more. So you say Gronk. Gronk. What yeah. do you say, Mo? Yeah, I'll probably say Gronk. Gronk number one, Gonzalez number two, Shannon Sharp number three, and then Antonio Gates four. 
I'm not uh, uh, now nah, I'll throw like Kelsey in there before I throw like Antonio Gates was good, but what I'm seeing out of like Travis, Travis Kelsey Kelsey already over and bro, I I'm, and, bro, yet, bro and, and, and Antonio rankings. Gates had him a run, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean I feel you, but like Travis Kelsey, like his run is exceeding Antonio Gates' run. So like like for what he's done in his career. But you career got to see, home. bro. Like, well, look at these quarterbacks you're talking about. You're talking about Patrick Mahomes versus Phillip Rivers. Like, all due respect to Phillip Rivers, he's not Patty Mahomes. I'm I mean, it's just that boy Kelsey get open, man. But I feel you. I feel you. Like Antonio Gates, I I'll throw, I guess we could throw him. I guess we could throw Shannon Sharp for Antonio Gates five. I just find it hilarious that, like, Shannon Sharp is this all-time great tight end, and he's going to be known more for being, a, like, the LeBron stand on uh, Undisputed more yeah. than his actual football playing career. You got to think about basketball, man, with the kids. Like, how many kids know how good Charles Barkley was, bro? Like, legit. That watch yeah. inside the NBA. I mean, we in our mid-20s, and we didn't watch Charles Barkley play. So think about somebody that's younger than us. They definitely never watched him play, unless you watch his highlights on YouTube. Yeah. Even if you say that with Jordan, we at least saw, like, Wizard Jordan, you know what I mean? But most kids are, like, if Bro, you that, under, that makes it, You know how old that's going to make us in, like, 10 years? To be like, we saw Jordan play, and we remember Jordan playing. At the end of his career. career. Yeah. I definitely had a Wizards uh, Michael Jordan jersey in, like, elementary school. <laughs> I had to. Yeah. 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 So with you know, with them getting through another season, uh I mean another week of college football, you know, no games were canceled, whatnot, you know, with most of the teams getting their vaccinations, you know, kind of make me think, you know, on the discussion of vaccinations and you know, and just sports in general. And do you feel like teams should be making decisions uh, as far as players and like just selection of players if they want to get vaccinated or not. Like, how y'all feel about that? I think no matter what job you work at, what career you're in, um, they're going to be, well, specifically if you, if you work for, uh, if you're employed by somebody else, that employer is always going to have rules or standards or whatever you know that they want you to abide by to work for their company. Now I understand if you if you personally say I, I don't want to uh, abide by that rule and I don't want to do that, then there's nothing wrong with that. You you got to live with the reality of if they're saying we want you to get uh, vaccinated, or you're gonna have to go through all these tests and all this extra stuff that other players that are vaccinated won't have to. Then you got to deal with those consequences. You know what I mean? And in Cam Newton's case. I think that probably got him cut is that he wasn't, it was like, all right, well, are we, we going to keep dealing with you possibly being out for five days randomly during the season as our starting quarterback versus this other guy that we know is going to be a consistently, you know, we're going to go with the other guy. So it's just, I understand somebody not wanting to get vaccinated, you know, it's your body, do what you want. But if you want to play in these leagues, they're telling you, we need you to get vaccinated. Right. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with Jelani there, but I also think it's an interesting note. Uh, Kirk Cousins is another guy who's like a, a, a anti-vax um, conspiracy theories, and it's like, why didn't Kirk Cousins get you know cut? Why is he showing it? Why is he still in the running for starter with the Vikings? Like the stuff he has to do, really. Like when he was in protocol or whatever, and he came out, he had to like be in like a little container or whatever, like a lot of plastic around him and whatnot, just to eat lunch and stuff. He had to like travel by himself and walk around the campus by himself. And it's just like, that's just doing the most, bro. Like literally just get the shot, bro. But, you know, I, I think with this, um, you know, like Jelani said, man, when you always work for somebody else, you're going to have to work under their rules. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as personal life and personal choices, People can make personal life and personal choices, but at the end of the day, as long as you work for somebody else, you're gonna have to follow what somebody else is telling you to do. And uh, this is something that, you know, vaccinate, the thing about vaccinations are, is that it's not like, if you don't get vaccinated, that's cool. That's, that's none of my business. I'll keep living my life and keep living yours. 
the thing about it is if you're unvaccinated and you and you contract the virus you can hand off the virus you know what i'm saying you can't ha- like that's the point like it's like unvaccinated people can still hand off the virus to other people so it's like you could be like i don't want to take it but if you you know contract it and you start handing it out to other people then it's just like you messing it up for everybody bro i think that's the problem with it with you know the the whole my body my choice thing because it's like it's not just for you though it's for you know society and humanity and stuff like that but um those are my thoughts on it and stuff like that it's unfortunate that uh that it plays a factor you know even though teams can't admit it because they'll get fined and stuff like that like the Jacksonville Jaguars they launched an entire investigation and stuff like that but I mean it's life it is what it is it's a lot of unfair stuff so my thing is as long as you work for somebody else, you got to do what somebody else tells you to do. Right. No, I definitely agree with that. Because also, I look at it as if I'm a coach and you have a missing games and losing games because, you know, you believe in, I don't know, and that's the thing. It is a touchy subject because some people really have these strong beliefs that, the vaccine isn't the right thing for them. And, but I don't know, man. Because, just, because they are smarter than the world's best health doctors and scientists. Just remember that. There's right. because they have Google. Yeah, man. But, you know, that also goes into, I don't know if y'all heard about Joe Rogan earlier this week. You know, he got COVID. And he came out and said that he took a horse dewormer. Uh, I think it called ivermectin. And, you know, it's been a lot of reports of people taking that as opposed to the vaccine. Uh, but that same day, I did see a sheriff, I think in Texas, uh, took the ivermectin and he died two days later. So, I mean, you know, it's not, the results varies. You, you see, you see how dumb the internet has made humanity. Like, look at this. Like, people have gone so much around something so basic, of eat this, eat plant A, and you can't blame it. Like, like I said, for the first few months, I real, I legit understood everybody's hesitancy because I was hesitant, right? Because it's like for so many years they've they've given us eat plant A, and you eat plant A. And then this and this happens to you and you get hives on your face and you start breaking out. And you're like, what the heck happened? And it's like, cause you ate plant A. It's like, well, you told me to eat plant A. And it's like, oh my bad, it's comes with these side effects. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we lived with that our entire lives with what the government was approving, uh, you know, FDA and everything like that. And we found out years later that it wasn't any type of good for us. So when they tell us eat plant A, in this situation, we're like, ah, I don't want to eat plant A again because you already messed me up from all the other times you messed me up with plant A. So, right. Mm -hmm. But the fact that that's our mindsets, the like the type of, uh, what do you call it? Obstacles and hula hoops that people jump through. Just horse, we're shooting ourselves with horse stuff. You're a human. Warmers. Horse warmers. That's the dumbest thing I've heard in my... What it is? Say it again. Like a dewormer. A dewormer. Like, like, you know, when a a horse got worms? Oh, a a horse d. That's the dumbest thing I heard in my life. And y'all are some of the dumbest people I have ever heard of to ever walk on the planet Earth. And, you know, I hope nothing bad happens to you all, you know, because it's already happened to a lot of folks. But the folks who, uh, they said some folks is getting blind from this. But what, what did you think was going to happen? If you eat some dog food and you start throwing up, who do you blame? Yourself or the, the people who sold you the dog food? Because you're a human. So what, what are we doing right now? I want you to think about the things that they were intendedly made for. So if I make something that's for humans and I tell you, look, trust this thing is for humans. The FD, uh, the, the scientists approved it, blah, blah, blah. And it's been out for uh, 11 months. Ain't nothing happened to nobody to, to train. What you going to do? You're going to say, no, let me take this thing that's for horses instead. How dumb does that sound? And I know I'm, I'm talking in circles now, 
but I'm gonna let you go, Jelani. Go ahead. No, I just think like people gotta understand Joe Rogan hosted Fear Factor. So for years, <laughs> he's been eating bull penis and elephant ass and just all types of just strange concoctions. So his stomach is not the average person's stomach. Like he can, I'm sure that he has like backup doctors and IVs and all these things, you know, in case he dies from this horse dewormer. You working at Kinko's in Montana, you know, you, if you eat this and you, you you die or you go to the hospital or whatever, your family can't afford the funds. So, you know, don't go following after everybody that you see that's influential on the internet because they have a cool podcast and they say, hey, you know, I do this, you know, think for yourself. Certain stuff is common sense at the end of the day. You know, a lot of this stuff is Darwinism. Like, I don't like to, I don't like to like act like I'm smarter than a lot of people or anything like that. But certain stuff is just like, bro, like if you die from that, you kind of brought that one on yourself. You know what I mean? Yo, it's crazy, Jelani, that you say that because like I was I was literally talking to a friend a couple of weeks ago and they were like, uh, I don't feel sorry for anybody who dies from from not getting the shot at this point, because it's been so many months and blah, blah, blah. And then like they hit me the other day and they were like, hey, uh, I like to take back what I said. I have a friend who's in the hospital right now, currently like on the ventilator fighting for their life. <laughs> they didn't get the shot. So uh, I take back what I said. I hope everybody dies if they don't get it. <laughs> and it's like, but but I, I stand by what I said, but you know, I just, you know, I didn't mean to come off so aggressively. And it's, uh, it's just funny that, that you say that. Do y'all believe that this disease is human made? It's from Wuhan, the respiratory center and whatnot? I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, you gotta think. Um, I don't know, bro. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past it. Population control, you know. Anything is possible. So I, I'm not gonna say. Uh, I'm not gonna say no. But I just the whole my whole thing with COVID that is. It, I think we really. I think we've gotten to the of the fact that we were living a normal life for all these years. And then, you know, it was 2019, we were going into 2020. I feel like there was some optimism for a new decade, a lot of positive thoughts, you know what I mean? And then we went into the decade and randomly just out of nowhere, this disease just pops no, up. No, 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 say, say, say what happened first. Cause, cause the disease was there in 2019, but it didn't really, yeah, but it all, wasn't. like you say, into a couple months, but, but what happened first, Jelani, what happened first when we went into the new decade with, with, uh, with, with fresh perspective? What are you? What are you? What are you alluding to? You talking about Kobe? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm well, not gonna say that Kobe dying brought well, the COVID. Well, first thing like, it was David Stern. David Stern died on New Year's Day. I said, okay, something's wrong with this year. I like David Stern. He a little old. Okay, Kobe wished David Stern. He said, R.I.P. Brother. And then 19 eight. Well, 25 days later, nah. LeBron passed Kobe on the all time scoring list in Philadelphia, Kobe's hometown. And they mm -hmm. asked LeBron, and LeBron go on an eighteen minute answer about him, him and Kobe Bryant. And a couple of hours later, Kobe Bryant leaves us. I said, "Uh, uh, all right, something's up. Something's going on in 20. I'm lying. I, I definitely didn't say that about the year when Kobe passed, but it was really sad. Anyway, <laughs> you gave that you gave a long dramatic. It, it, it was good leader. for the story, you know. It was good you gave for a long the story. dramatic leader just to bail Play it up. Like, I said, you but, but, the, the story. It said, Kobe died. I said, Kobe died. I said, 2020, this is gonna be a terrible year. I feel it in my spirit, but you know, you used to be sounding like Mr. Crocker from Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> wow, I'm sitting there listening to you, bro. I was like, he capping. <laughs> like, I could just feel it. I was like. Right, he did not just see Kobe pass. He was like, yeah, this year, this is it. So th throw the whole year in the trash, man. Throw the whole year in the mm -hmm. trash. But, yeah, that stuff crazy, bro. Like, I seen... No, no. Okay. Hey, wait, wait, hold, hold on, hold on. But before you continue, Mo, Jelani, continue with what you were saying about us living our normal life and then being shut down in 2020. Oh, no, I just feel like we've gotten desensitized to the fact that our lives... Everybody had plans for that year. Everybody had things that they wanted to do, you know, goals and aspirations for 2020. And our lives were just upended 
one day. You know, it, it progressively started to get like less, um, excuse me, get more and more uh, restrictive. Like one day people were like, all right, we should start wearing masks. And then you start starting to be like an emphasis on washing hands and slowly but surely. And then, but it, I feel like it was one, like after Rudy Gobert, uh, tested positive and they shut the NBA down. That's when the rest of the country was like, all right, like we we really got to go on lockdown now and all that. And whatever plans you had for the rest of the year, you know what I mean? If it involved a bunch of people, it was over with. Oh, well, quick question. Where, where were y'all when y'all found out Rudy Gobert tested positive? Um, I was in my backyard smoking, I think, actually. So that was a little, little, bit, of a, a little bit of a shocker. <laughs> I was off the gas. The NBA is shut down for the rest of the season. Like what? <laughs> yeah, I was at work, and you know I'm a server, so we saw it on TV, and it was saying that Rudy Gobert tested positive. Well, it was saying you know Rudy Gobert, like you, you know he having symptoms. So I was like, oh crap. And then, and then when they said that the NBA was shut down, then I was like, oh man, like. That's when I ain't going to lie. I, I was like, this, that's not a good sign. Kind of like, now things are really getting shut down. But I didn't think it was going to turn into what it turned into. You know, I thought, I thought this ain't a good sign. Like, dang, man, no sports for rest of, for, you know, for a little minute. That's what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking like, oh, man, I'm going to be in the crib for the next six months. Right. <laughs> That jump was crazy, bro. I, I was in the office, like like Mo said. I was at work too, and uh, I don't know why I was in the office so late. I guess like that's just how I used to work. Like my whole schedule is like flipped around now. Like I start in the morning, like at nine, nine thirty at the latest. I used to start at eleven, eleven thirty noon. You know what I'm saying? So like my whole day's been flipped around now. But um, yeah, I was in the office finishing up or something I don't know what the heck was going on and you know it started the cases started ramping up a little bit like it wasn't such a novel thing like they were like the first case in Fulton County the first case in Atlanta and I was like oh snap like it's in Atlanta now like oh snap okay all right and then uh you know the Rudy Gobert thing happened and uh and yeah I, I was just I was just on my phone looking at Woj and then he said, they evacuating the stadium. I'm like, they evacuating the stadium? They're like, they're shutting it down. I'm like, bro, what? So, dang. I think uh, Vince Carter and them was still playing. Vince Carter hit the last shot, whatever. And then uh, Dwayne Dedman, he running back to the locker room with the, like, life-size little antibiotic, little uh, hand sanitizer, whatever, into the locker room. I'm like, bro, like, this is crazy. Because, like you say, Jelani, it was like, that weekend before, everybody was like, they stopped shaking hands. You know, everybody started doing this, you know, doing the little foot dab and whatnot. And so, like, I don't know, it just jumped, like, very suddenly. And then I called my mom. My mom was like, yo, get toilet paper. I was like, why? And then she was like, Italy shut down, just get toilet paper. And I was like, mom, I already have toilet paper. She's like, just do it, it. You know, people were freaking out. So I went to Walmart that night. Everything was out at Walmart. It was really, truly the apocalypse. And, uh, yeah, man, I was pretty scared. I ain't going to lie. Because I thought, you know, it was going to be like Italy, where if you go out in the street, they start beating you with the little batons and stuff. But it never got like that in America. Yeah. Yeah, that toilet paper era was wild because diarrhea. I mean, I'm not sure that might be a symptom of COVID, but I don't think, like... Not too many people I know that have had COVID were like, yeah, I had to boo-boo a lot. I don't think that toilet paper would have really helped you out. You know what I mean? But all right. there's so many other things you, sh you should have been stacking up on. Right, outside of toilet paper. I, I developed a, um, a ramen noodle addiction in the, in the pandemic because, you know, ramen noodles last long, you know, non-perishable items. Right, you need to get down with the culture, get you them wrap snack noodles. Oh, you're right. You're right. I do like, like, uh, that's what Master P say every time he go on Breakfast Club. Why can't we support our own? Support the black man. S support no limit. Right. Big facts. But yeah, man. So moving on. 
Shoot. Rocco Romeo. <laughs> he, he brought him out during the verses. He brought him out. He said, he said, you know, we got to promote some. I got the wrap snacks and the little noodles. <laughs> <laughs> right. That, that was my favorite. No, nah, uh, it wasn't my favorite. It was top three, though. Top three favorite. Yeah, top three favorite verses, man. Bow Wow and Soldier Boy. That was top three for me. Legendary. Yeah, no, nah, that one that one was crazy. Where, where where do you rank that one for you? Uh I mean it's up there. I'll say top I'll give it top five because I really can't even think of, you know, the ones I'll put before it. But I can't think of the ones I'll put behind it either. Like so that's why I'm like, I don't want to give it, I can't give it top three, but it's up there. So I don't where you got it. My my personal favorite ones, I don't know where I can rank it. That one was dope. I liked, uh, I liked the, the original Swiss Beats and Timberland one, the one that really like popped off the whole Boo. thing. You didn't like that one? Nah, it's just too boring. It's like I like the Swiss Beats and Timberland one. Like, that's but too you had to that you got to think that wasn't a concept at that time. Like, it that was the one that really popped the whole concept off. It was just random. Like, you're right, you're right. These two mega producers just randomly playing the hits at one in the morning. You know what I mean? That was like when the pandemic first started off. So I like that one. I like obviously DMX and Snoop was now that DMX has passed. That's like legendary now because that was his last kind of public performance you know what i mean yeah. um also on my like dusty rap head you know what i mean vibe i definitely i like ghost face versus break you know what i mean oh you mm -hmm. are you a backpacker backpacker i'll be on my dusty vibes man you know uh yeah sometimes i bring the backpack out baggy cargo pants that type of vibe so so do you have soldier boy bow wow top five then Cause, cause, I mean, because if, if you like that one, the Wu Tang, I like both. One, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they both represent me. They're both both part of my my hip hop soul. You know, I can appreciate Soldier Boy, Bow Wow, and Ghostface and Raekwon. Man, like now that I'm really thinking about it, I don't I don't think it's top five for me, bro. But but what about what, what okay? But what about Locks and Dipset though, Jelani? Because I know Dipset that those. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That just happened. And I forgot about that. Yeah, that was. I mean, don't get it twisted. As much of a Dipset fan, I am. I love the Locks too. Like, I'm a big Locks fan, so I wasn't. It, it, I didn't like seeing Dipset go out like that, but it was still dope to see uh, the Locks get their appreciation and Jada Kiss get his appreciation. That was dope. I'm trying to think what other ones. Isley Brothers and Earth, Wind and Fire. That was that, that, that was good, but but I, I cannot I cannot put that over Bow Wow Soldier Boy. I'm sorry. Bow Wow Soldier Boy probably top five just for the entertainment value. Do you remember the dream? The, this was like one of the early ones, the Dream and uh, Long Garrett. Yeah, that was for yeah. entertainment purposes. That might be top five. That that was back when, like like you said, when it was uh, uh the split screen and, and he was just talking crazy to this phone, man. You're just talking crazy to us, phone. They they can't do that now. They gotta act like they friends on stage together. But back when nah, they were in their own homes, you could say whatever you wanted. I don't know if you remember, but I want to say yeah, Sean Gary. You said something about either Beyonce or Jay Z, and then he went off like they went offline for a little while, and it came back, and he was definitely uh, more sober and coherent the second time when it came back. So I'm guessing he got a phone call from the from the Carter Mansion. From the relax, right? We for, we forgot uh we forgot Jeezy and Gucci. Yeah, that's why I, was... I did it. I didn't. I, okay, I got because so these these my three. These my top three: Jeezy and Gucci, uh, Locks and Dipset, Bow Wow, Soldier Boy. I'm not mad at that. As far as entertainment value and discussion, you know. And you also have to consider my background. I'm a young man in my twenties. Grew up on Soldier Boy, grew up on Bow Wow. When they were making music for kids, I was a kid. Uh, Jeezy, Gucci, I'm from Atlanta. Those is, that was a big beef in Atlanta. Uh, what, what was the other one I say? Uh, dip, dips and uh, Dipset and, and Locks. That one I just like. I just I, I had no like connection to that. I just I just really like that battle. Like I replay it like it's an album. That's fire. 
Mo, what's your, what would you say is your top three? Um, let's see. I'm thinking I will go with Jeezy and Gucci. Um, Earth, Wind, and Fire one for me with the Isley Brothers, with them performing live, and that one was amazing. So I got to put that up there. Um, them dudes could barely stand up, bro. Let's talk about it. Bro, but they was, though. They the elders, man. They were standing. They were standing, though. And... And then, like, you got the Isley brother. Uh, I can't remember. I don't know his name. But the one uh, that played the bass, going up there, performing almost every song. Like, they was out there doing – and the songs are just so classic, bro. Yeah, that, yeah that, that was the best probably old heads one. I put that – because who Gladys, Gladys Knight faced Patti LaBelle? Yeah. yeah. I, like, I like the other old heads one a little more. But that one was a good one, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but I I guess I'll put Soldier Boy and Bow Wow up there. Like, I, I feel like there's something like there's another one that I would like when Alicia, I watch. What about Alicia Keys, John Legend? Nah, no, that was yeah, no, no. And I like Alicia I li- Keys music. I liked it, and John Legend music to an extent, but it just wasn't. Yeah, that was just real like. Uh, like Macy's in the mall background music type vibes, you know what I mean? You go <laughs> shopping for a Christmas sweater, right? And it's the type of stuff they play in the background. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like the I like the gospel mm-hmm. one too with Fred Hammond and uh, Kirk Franklin. I like that one. Yeah, that one was really good. I didn't see that one. But Mo, who else? Who else? You, no, you you need to put a list though. You can't just be naming all the ones you like. <laughs> I mean, let's see. What's pressing him for his versus list? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think like uh what's some other ones that happen? Uh let me think. Uh Erica Badu. Yeah, Scott. Badu Joe Scott. That one was cool. I ain't gonna throw that in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh uh Kiss and um Fabulous. That one was cool, but nah. Nah, nah, that that one was. It that yeah, like he said, it was cool, but it, it just won't for me. And Joe Budden loved that one, bro. They love everything from that era, dog. Yeah. I say the the reggae one. The reggae one was really that good. That was fire. That, I didn't even watch that one. That was fire. I, I was I was thinking about putting that in my top three, but that was fire. Yeah. Um, so I guess that the reggae one is number four. I'm trying to think what would be number five. Man, see, I found if I had a list of all the ones that happened, it's been a lot. Like, like yeah. Jelani listed a couple that I forgot about. I remember, uh, I remember uh, Nelly getting washed with the with the because it's bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, T Pain and uh, Lil John. Yeah, that was one of the early ones. Babyface and uh, Teddy Riley. There we go. That I put that one. So Soldier Boy had to move down one. The Teddy Face and uh the I said Teddy Face. Uh Teddy Riley and Baby Face. That one was I really like that one too. I like, you know, older music and I just like the live performance. And you know, I know Soldier Boy and you know Bow Wow did the live performance, but man, just hearing all the different songs that they were all a part of. That was that one was a really good one. It had me literally looking up music for the, like the rest of the night. Well, was there anybody who you guys like heard on a versus and they were like, "Yeah, I did work on this song," and then you're like, "Oh snap, I had no idea." Was there anybody like that that you guys had? Mm, I'm trying to think. If there was one. Most of these artists I know. I mean, I'm not gonna say all of them. Like, I don't know a, a ton of Patti LaBelle songs. I don't know. Like, I, if I heard them, I probably recognize them just because I grew up in a black family. You know what I mean? But like, I, I don't listen to a ton of Patti LaBelle or, you know what I mean? So like most of these artists, the contemporary artists, like I know a lot of their music. So it wasn't that many that I was like shocked about. Yeah, there wasn't too many that I was really shocked. Um, as I said, with the Babyface and Teddy Riley one, I, I feel there are a lot in there that I was like, man, I didn't know 
you worked on this, but once you heard it, then you can clearly hear the influence. So, um, but man, that was another thing about the Soldier Boy and Bow Wow one. How Bow Wow was playing a bunch of songs that he was like, that man spit like a four bar set for. And he was like, oh yeah, I'm throwing this on the verses. No, he was throwing in remixes to like hits, like Def Jam remixes or uh, So So Def, mm-hmm. excuse me, I said Def Jam. But yeah, yeah, I was like, bro, that can't count for your song, man. Like, but, I, I, but I like that one because it's like Bow Wow was the first artist I could remember, like ever. Yeah. You know, so like he took me back to when I was six, seven, eight. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it's like, dang, how I still remember the words of this. That's why I like the Bow Wow. And then, you know, Soldier Boy, of course, we were old enough to remember stuff by then. So I remember all his stuff, all 20. Right. And, and then, how, how many? Okay, that's a good art question. How many artists in the verses did you know all 20 songs? Um, let me think. I probably knew all of Soldier Boys 20. I probably knew all of Bow Wow's 20. Uh, or or not, if not all of them, the vast majority of them. Um, I'm trying to think who else. I, I knew all of uh, 2 Chains is 20. I forgot about 2 Chains and Rick Ross. Oh, uh, yeah. I definitely probably knew both of their 20. Or I know for sure I knew I, all I, did, of I, I didn't know all of Rick Ross's 20. I knew like probably like 17 out of 20. I knew almost all of Jeezy and Gucci's. There was probably like maybe like one or two songs each that I was like, I don't really know this one, but. I for sure knew all of Jeezy's. I knew Gucci played, Gucci got like a thousand mixtapes, so he played like one or two songs that was just like real, real, real deep cuts. And I know a lot of Gucci deep cuts, but he played a couple that was like, you you recorded this in the bathroom with Trap House in 2007, (laughs) you know what I mean? I, I definitely, this wasn't even like an Atlanta classic like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I know like my kitchen and songs like that that was on mixtapes, but. Right. Yeah. Who, who else did that? I knew Soldier Boys 20. Who else did that? 2 Chains 20. I knew, shoot, that's probably it. Mm. That might be it. As far as everybody, like your entire 20. Because the Bow Wow, it was like a couple of joints that like, I think I'd like kind of remember, but I'm like, you know, like I said, six years old. So I, it was even a couple of those I, I didn't remember. Um, but it's got to be more. Even Kirk Franklin and, and Fred Hammond, I'm not sure if I knew all their 20. But yeah, yeah. That, that, that's all I had. Listen, Timberland, Aliyah's album just came to streaming services. They're putting on more of them. Cut us some of that streaming money because we just promoted your brand. Right. We just we just gave y'all a big cosign, you know what I mean, on the podcast. Right. For real. Man, speaking of verses, you know, let's get to some real life verses, you know, real life beef. You know, it's it getting real out here. Like we got the Drake album dropping. We got Donda, you know, entering this second week. And man. It's things are getting crazy, but so I guess let's start off with just how we felt about the album. So like, you go ahead and start off, Jelani. I saw someone on Twitter say that uh, if you if you gave a robot, like if you play like some artificial intelligence robot, all of Drake's music and let it make an album, this would be the album that they would put out. And that was the best description I could say of it. Like it's it's not bad at all I, I don't think drake is capable of making just a straight up bad album it's sonically a good album but it's not anything it's like at this point for me personally there's nothing really innovative about drake's music for me at this point point. and the, the the thing the last time that i really felt that he was making like i wouldn't say innovative because the drill scene was already going on but i would say where it was something new that i hadn't heard from drake before was last year on the Dark Lane demo tapes when he had the song with Fabio and he had the song War, which was kind of like a UK drill song where I was like, all right, I haven't heard you make like Brooklyn UK drill music before. This is a new sound that I'm hearing from you. And that's also, I said this before, why I like More Life so much was that at the time, him rapping over 
like the the UK grind beats and certain stuff he was making on that album he hadn't done before. So that's when I'm most excited uh, to hear Drake at this point. But outside of that, it's like, these songs are good, but I've heard you make this song before. Like it's kind of formulaic at this point, to be honest. Way yeah. Too Sexy is fire though. And a couple yeah. other songs on there are fire. No, I definitely agree with that. I feel like it is very, like a lot of the songs are, just as you said, like you heard them before, but I feel like he kind of got, I feel like he got hit back a little more with it, just in the sense of like, I feel like he's talking heavier than he usually does. Like he he be talking his stuff, but I feel like now it's like, all right, I'm really, he he's saying, I don't know, just how he said that line, like you are sounding like a B, like, so you fancy, huh? Like just the little shots he was taking and stuff like that. Yeah. But it does just sound like more songs of the same. Right. Um, I don't know if y'all heard some of the leaks that had came out prior to the album. Um, TSU was one of them. Uh, and so I had heard that, you know, like a couple months ago. And I thought it was a good song. But as you said, like, I thought this is like, nah, he's not going to throw this on the album because this sounds just like something he would have made in 2019 or 2018, you know? But I guess he was just like, forget it. It's a good song. They like they like the formula. And so I ain't mad at it. What, how you feel about Rashad? I was so surprised when Jelani said, I feel like Drake hasn't brought anything new. Because that's exactly how I felt since about 2013. So welcome to the party, Jelani. Um, yeah, it's been about a decade when Drake's been making the same music. I don't know, man. All right, I'll say it like this. He started off the album, I hear the first song, the, the Masego flip. Shout out to Masego. And I'm like, oh, okay, this man's spitting. Okay, all right. He, he usually always started off hitting. And like, I'll say most of the songs are good. Most of the songs are good on a project. Most good songs on a project does not equal a good project. It goes back to what's a good project. A good project is cohesive and blah, blah, blah. The Cuddy song sounded out of place and whatnot. And I wasn't even thinking. I'm playing, I'm playing checkers. This joker playing chess. This man done got half a kiss. He goes on the album. He this and the other half a kiss. He goes. I'm like, oh, this man. Oh, this man Drake and then some of the bars he was saying I didn't catch it until I watched somebody's review shout out to Complex Edition and they're like they're breaking down some of the bars he was saying and they did the same thing on Donda and I was like yo like this man but for Kanye to be dissing the dude over some gospel beats and some <laughs> and gospel hooks that is just wild like Kanye a wild dude for that and then uh and then, you know, as we get to the to the Kanye leak and whatnot, we'll talk about that. But I don't know, man. Like Drake, Drake was really snapping though. He he was going yeah. off. He was rapping. Like his bars, like that's another one of my frustrations with Drake. The Joker can rap, but he act like he can't rap. Like he'll just do one verse, one song where he's just rapping. And then the rest will be like, whatever the heck to make to get something to stick. Pop. And then, you know, he always has a couple songs for the ladies, which I just absolutely loathe. Like, but I'm not a lady, though. But it just be boring music, bro. Like, he just he just make boring music with the slow stuff. But somebody out there loves it, obviously, because he keep making it. He been making it his whole career. But that's how I feel about the project. I feel like it's a lot of good songs. He really rapping. But like you say, the structure of it, the formula of the songs, and the fact that there's no organization, like I feel like the first seven, eight tracks had some type of like connectivity to it. And then it's just like, oh, I didn't throw in the slow songs. And he just splats in the slow song. Then in the middle of that, it's like, oh, 21 Savage, Knife Talk. Let's talk about killing people. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then go back to some sad songs. Here's a song from K. Cuddy humming. Like, and then uh, a last song with me doing bars again. Like, where's the, come on, man. What are you doing? I'm going down a roller coaster. Up and down, up and down. It's rocky. So that's how I feel about it. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. I, 
after a few lists, I mean, after like, you know, a couple listens, it definitely grew on me more. First listen, I did feel like it was, um, I guess, yeah, like I said, I didn't feel it wasn't, in, it was incohesive, but it just, it was just kind of like, all right, we're in this moment now that I wasn't expecting us to be in with certain songs, you know? But overall, as you said, like the bars, like still, still crazy. Um, how y'all feel about the second song, how he come in with Poppy's Home? I'm trying to remember how that, um... I, I, I like that song. I like that song, man. I like that song. Like, like yeah. I think that the only, the, the one that the uh, internet is killing is the one like, I heard it and I let it slide because I was vibing, but the internet was killing it. So I was like, okay, maybe we should be killing this bar, which was, uh, uh, and he said, she said she a lesbian. I said, me too. <laughs> I knew that's what you was going to say. <laughs> oh, that dude is funny. Then he said something about the kids too. Oh yeah, I mean, he was just rapping about the kids, bro, in general, bro. Oh, the Sierra Canyon line, that, that was that was pretty uneasy. Like, why would you say that? And then the- uh, Wait, wait, refresh my memory on that one? Uh, Sierra Canyon parking lot, looking like the Magic City parking lot. Oh, yes, I remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, why would I mean, you say that? that uneasy, though? Is What's he, you know, and like, <laughs> it is a little bit weird hey, to hear a 35 year old say that about a high school parking lot. Like, yo, I'm I'm bagging yeah. the moms, and you know what I mean? It's, I mean, uh, but it's just one mom. Like, everybody's mom don't look like that. Nah, but so look, the thing is, it's like he's not even talking about like like the moms and stuff. He's talking about like, bro, like they really be having them cars out there. Like, it really be looking crazy oh, yeah. like, after the game. Yeah. Like you, you could have you you said like you could have said like a place that's known for elegance. Like what's the nah, place? I mean, but still like, like it wouldn't that wouldn't have hit the same, you know? And because Rashad, think about it. Before before the whole Drake, before Drake was even like a picture in the Sierra Canyon like thing, I had texted you about Amari Bailey hopping in a Lamborghini truck, like on two different Lamborghini trucks on separate occasions. And I was like, bro, who is this man's parents? So it's like, like, you know, Drake ain't lying. Like, it really do be looking crazy out there after the games. Well, it's, it's just a rich school in a rich area in the United States. So, I mean, that is just what it is. But Sierra Canyon, bro, I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, bro, like, that's literally the it school. Like, that's literally the, um, the Zoe 101 campus in real life now. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, bro. I feel like the album, as I said, was good. Um, I liked it. Uh, it grew on me more and more. Uh, y'all got a favorite song? Mine personally is Love All. I like Love All. I still, and I'm not even just saying it because it's the single that they push in or because they put the video out. Mm -hmm. Way Too Sexy is just my personal fit. Like, that's a song that I've gone back to the most. I like In Too Deep. Um, me too. Because of that sample, that song was fire to me. I like the song with Dirk. Like it's kind of, I, I just like the way he's flowing on there. It's kind of a bit. It's like a little bit. Uh, it's like an odd way of rapping. I was rapping. Yeah, I like that with the beat. Outside of, I, I can be honest. I don't really. I'm not like a big Giveon fan. I mean, really, it's just kind of like he makes a brand of R&B that I'm just not a fan of. I feel like there's a lot of. Uh, I'm not gonna say he be on a song whispering, but it's like a, it's like an elegant whisper almost. Like that's how he sings to me. You know, it's like it's like a it's like a whisper with a British accent, right? Um, but yeah, the, the, like you said, as far as the songs I didn't like, the song with Kid Cudi was just kind of it just didn't really fit. It was, it was just kind of a bit off. Um, it was like it's like Kid Cudi was doing his like the stereotypical Kid Cudi, and then Drake was doing the stereotypical Drake, and it was like. Like, neither one of them tried to, like, kind of, you know, mesh with each other. They just did their own thing yeah. on the same track. Yeah, that's that's the main issue with me with the album is just, you alluded to it already. I, by the way, I got to dispute something that you said. You said Drake hasn't made anything new sounding since 2013. You're I right, because this is what he does. This is, this nah. is what he did. Because look, Jelani, this is what nah, he did. It, this is what really he did from 2015 to 2017, he was like, okay, 
I'm going to go live in another country for a couple of months, and I'm going to steal your whole swag. I'm going to jump on stage. Y'all going to be like, ooh, Drake performing Jumpman. And then I'm going to come back and steal your whole swag. I'm still, if we're going back to If You're Reading, it's too late. That was a new sound from Drake. He, he, hadn't, he hadn't really made that type of music before. But, but no, nah, but that's what I'm saying. 2015 is when he started doing it. 2015, what he do? He came back with One Dance. He came back with... Uh, with uh um Adele old boyfriend, Rich Paul girlfriend now. Um uh who who was it? What's his boy name? Skepta. Yeah, Skepta. Skepta. He yeah, came yeah, back yeah. with the Skepta tracks. He came back with the uh doodle doodle, doodle you know. I'm like, what is man's not hot, you know, he had that whole thing going on or whatever. And it's just white, bro. Like that's just what Drake's been doing. Like he you know, because he was making the same thing, bro. Like his albums was always like this. Start off with some bars, go into some turn up tracks, go off with some sad songs in the middle of the album, and then end with some bars and over a sample. And he did that for like nothing was the same. He did that for uh no 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 before that take care nothing was the same uh so and so uh nah, like he I, tripping nah take care like right that he was not sitting there just jocking swag like. No, Take he, care he, of you. No, 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 no. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. He wasn't jocking swag back then. I'm saying he was making the same album, like the structure. Start off with some bars, uh, go into turn up music, go into some sad, slow songs, and then end it on bars over a sample. That, that was his formula for making projects, right? I'm saying early career. I had no problem with that. About trophies hit. And I'm like, dang, it's 2013, and this man's still making kind of like the same music. And then uh, Zero to 100 came out the next summer, and I'm like, bro, this sound, he doing the same thing he doing on uh, uh, Trophies with the, I ain't your records on my demo. We go Zero to 100 real quick. It's like he doing that. He just yelling over the beat, bro. Like he doing the same like structure of a song. And then, you know, but then he was like, okay, I'll say I'm doing the same thing. Let me go over to London. He jump on London. They they bring him out. Jump man, jump man. Ah, oh, Drake in London for free. I can't believe it. And he come back to America sounding like London folks. And then he go sounding with the one dance. He he's a culture vulture, bro. He culture vulture from 2015 to 2017. Earl Sweatshirt tweeted, Drake a culture vulture. Drake put it on the back of the uh, the cover on Scorpion, and he stopped doing it. And now he back to making the same music that he was making eight years ago. And it's just the same thing, bro. Like, he, I don't know, bro. He making the same music. Jelani, continue. I'm not going to say that. I, you got some points on what you're saying to an extent. I'm not going to, like, totally disagree with you. It's just, I think when you somebody, the thing that I want to hear from Drake, like I said, as a Drake fan, is just at this point, you reach a point where you're a legend, so you don't have to, like, you have nothing to prove musically as far as trying to make pop hits or that you have a brand maintained and that there's always going to be some, when you listen to a Drake album, there's always going to be some attempts at radio that might not work. That's why he puts out these, these long albums, because it's like, all right, I'm going to shoot as many shots as far as being, um, having hits or having mainstream widely available music as possible and if it doesn't hit it but it's just the thing of where it's like bro i'm i just want to hear you make i don't i don't know I, it just it, you have the resources production wise where you can make a innovative album as far as sounds that we've never heard before you know the the r&b sample with the underwater filter and the 808 and Heartbreak drums, we've heard this this version like a million times, you know what I mean? But that's, it, it's, it's, you can't be, you, you when you listen to a Drake album, you just gotta know what to expect. I can't complain too much, you know what I mean? I know what he does at this point. Yeah, I mean, like, first off, I'm gonna say, as you know, as a Drake fan, personally, I don't think he a culture vulture. I just yeah, think I he, agree with that too. yeah, like, I just, I just think like people underestimate just like as an artist, you get inspired. Like you hear music and then it's just people get mad because many artists try to do stuff like this. They try to go get into different lanes, but it never works out because they can't do it right. 
the man Drake can do it right. So then the songs pop off, and then it's just like, dang, man, this man trying to steal a whole swag. And it's like, nah, he just, he got inspired. But, you know, that's a, that's a topic for another for another day. But regardless, I feel, you know, I do agree with you, like, that this album in particular, it is very similar to a lot of stuff that he's done before. There's a lot of the same formats, a lot of, but at the same time, it's just the bars, the bars are still there. So it's kind of like, I'm, I can overlook that a little bit. You I, know? I, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. The bars is next level. Yeah, you know, and I think, you know, now getting to the topic of Donda versus CLB. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I have one more thing to say. Oh. This is, this is the standard I'm holding Drake to. Childish Gambino puts out a Gangster Grills mixtape in 2014. Gangster Rizzo, gangster! He comes back two years later and he makes Redbone. Right. Tyler, the creator, goes away for two years at a time. He comes back and makes Eagle. Kendrick Lamar comes out, you know, you, you talk about the, the multiple layers and the different pitches on the different layers. The swimming pool, swimming pool. I did, did, did. <clears throat> You know, ASAP Rocky was doing the whole thing with the pitch and voice too. But the difference between ASAP Rocky and Kendrick Lamar, all due respect to ASAP, Kendrick Lamar comes back a couple of years a later. Fire and he <laughs> what you say? <laughs> and, and, he makes, and he makes the pimp a butterfly. That's the difference between ASAP and, but, but yeah, that, that is what it is. Yeah. Like, it's, just, I, it's just like artists on the level, you know what I'm saying, who have the platform to do, like, like what Jelani says, to be innovative. Childish Gambino, you like, what the heck is he going to do now? Joker come back talking about some, what the heck? What are, what are we talking about right now, man? Why can't Drake do something like that? that? That's just all I'm saying. Hey, man, you know, he still got another decade left in him, so we'll see. Maybe he'll throw that in there later. You feel me? It's like his potential ain't, you know, ain't fully reached. So, Drake, Drake is LeBron. He, he's going to be in year 19 with the, with the Donis rapping on, on the features and stuff. You said what? He's going to be uh, you know, like, uh, like LeBron, year 19. With the Don is rapping on the features like Bronny on the Lakers. Oh, that would be tough. But I ain't gonna cap a Don is on the like he finna spit nothing. Like that little boy looks so shy. Like he ain't got no friends, no cap. But you gotta think, bro, his dad is Drake, bro. Like Drake is a different level of famous. Like is I think only how many people on earth can even relate to that type of fame right now? Like Messi, Ronaldo. Yeah. Now nah, that's a fact. Yeah, like, and the situation that he does look all extra shy and everything, it's, you know, it's the crazy opportunities that, you know, a lot of normal people would kind of, especially when you saw him on stage, he started crying. Then that decade of the year, I was like, dang, like, he didn't know what to do. I felt bad. <laughs> like, like, bro, if, if you was on ABC Live at the age of four, like, I, I was shy at the age of four when, like, my mom made me, you know, say hello to someone new at church, you know? Like, just right. imagine being on national television, and you know, say, you know, he'll probably grow out of it. I mean, he has to. He's Drake's son, you know? Do, do you right. guys think, uh, speaking on that before you go to the to the beef, do you think that Bronny's going to make the lead? Um, I mean, shoot. yeah. He might not, but either way, it's... it's... I don't think he'll be like, oh, what was me? I didn't <laughs> I didn't make the NBA. My life is over. Like he's still I think he'll be okay for himself regardless. I think he gonna I think he's gonna make it just like Lagello Ball just, you know, made the league. So like I think Jello can Ronnie, hoop though. Jello can hoop though. Don't yeah. do Jello like that. Nah, but that's why but the fact of Jello can hoop, but Le, Bronny gonna be able to hoop better than what J the level that Jello's at, regardless if he's not, you know, a draft pick. But he gonna make somebody summer league team. Somebody gonna pick him up off the name, you know. 
It's like you're LeBron James Jr., bro. We gotta we gotta figure out, you know, we gotta see what you talk about. They said the same so, thing about Michael Jordan sons, though. And it was, you know, I mean, I never seen I never seen uh the Marcus Jordan uh summer camp highlights, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, but Bronny can play though. That's the thing. Like Marcus Jordan, he he was straight at UCF. That's UCF. Yeah. But Bronny can play. Like Bronny is playing at one of the best high schools in America. And he, he's like he had playing, he was in the rotation as a freshman. Last season he was, you know, not healthy. So when he came back, he barely played because he, he missed the entire season one of the top teams in the nation, but I don't know. I think that freshman year gave people, including myself, I'm speaking mostly for myself, so much hope. That sophomore year was kind of disappointing, and now it's like, dude, you only have two more years left. And, you know, if you're not buzzing by your junior year, which it is for him now, then it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, chances aren't looking so good. You might end up like Zaire Ray, you know what I'm saying, in a couple months, so. Yeah. Yeah, but that, nah, he got more. I'll just say he, one, he has more hype because that way, you know, he didn't really have no hype until he went to Sierra Kane. Like, I ain't gonna cap. I thought when he went to Sierra Kane, I thought by that point he was like 20. I didn't even know he was like, you know, still eligible because you'll see these little highlights for years, just like with uh, Carmelo's son. I've been seeing, high, you know, little stuff for him. I thought, you know, how old is he you now? What, like, 14? Yeah, he's not even in high school yet. 13, probably 13, probably 13, 14. Yeah, but I ain't gonna cap, you know, these kids be big, so, you know, I don't, I don't mean know how old they are, for real, but I just think, with you know, with Bronny, you know, he's he's already a top, you know, 25 recruit. It's not like he's not ranked. You know, a lot of these... He's like, falling, though. He's falling. Yeah, you know, but he was injured, so... You know, we're going to see if he can get back, man. But let's go ahead and get into, you know, the Kanye versus Drake. Um, so I will kind of – what I was getting into earlier about that topic is with listening to the albums in comparison, I just think, man, it made me really just realize Kanye don't really be saying nothing. Like, you know, I'm not saying Drake just be super, like, you know, deep. So, you know, as we go with the bars, like, the bars next level, you, like, really listen here, you know? But me going back to Donda, there's not really too many cool things. It's, like, one of the lines that I saw that was, like, you know, that was one of his most quotable lines was the, I'm talking to God, like, he my bestie. Uh, it looked like a soccer field in my backyard. I look. I feel like I'm messy. Like, you know, compare that to any of the top 100 bars on CLB. You know, it's just kind of like, you're going to be like this. That, this that, 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 that bar, up, hold on. Let know? me defend that bar. That bar was funny. That bar was funny. He said, okay. They, they playing soccer. The first time I heard that, I started cracking up. I even texted it to you. Yeah. Because that, he said, he said they playing soccer in my backyard. I think I see Messi, like, because this man was literally living in the stadium. Like, that joke is hilarious. Right. Like, I feel that, but it's just like, I don't know. It, he ain't really saying nothing, you know? It's just like the stuff that he says, it comes from shock value of the fact that he's mentioning something or someone that we know. So it's like, dang, he just really said that, you know? But it's not really just no bars that you just like, bruh, like, because I don't know. Like, can you give me some quotable bars from Donda, like, that he said? Not not none of his features. Like, that he but, said. You but, well, well, uh, well some, some of the most memorable stuff for me, memorable stuff, well, not rememberable, uh, memorable stuff for me was when he said, um, uh, I, I could – I could give a, a, a dollar to everybody on earth. I guess this guy's plan to set it up then, set it up then. Or no, he, he said he said something about the boy after that. And then he was like, the boy gonna have to see me set it up then. Like, like I don't know. Like, I didn't pick up that that was a diss into like the third, second listen or whatever. I was like, oh, snap. But uh, that, that was one of my memorable lines. That won't nothing. But really, 
It was that free kick. Yeah, exactly. Um, that that leak though. That leak. That boy, hey, he still got it. That boy still got it, man. And we're gonna get to that. I ain't mean to jump ahead, but he still got it. He he was spitting, spitting on that one though. On uh, we could talk about it. We're talking about the beef now. I would just say, uh, as far as to answer your question about the bars, I think Kanye has always prioritized uh, his production over the lyrics. Right. Not to that, with that being said, I think because of the era that he came out in, uh, we're talking like 2004, 2005, that was more of an era where you did have to be more of a rapper necessarily to get played on radio and things like that than you do now. Now you can get away with, you know, we got, there wasn't really any artists like Playboy Cardi in 2004. Not to say that I don't like Playboy Cardi, but just that style, whereas you could just kind of have like ad libs over a nice beat wasn't really a thing back then. So now I just think, yeah, they, when they we're just, in this they era, just had you, great lyrical like masterminds like Fable. I mean, Fable wasn't just it wasn't just ad libs though, and we had to like Fable's first verse on Laffy Taffy is not iconic. Like that's a right. legendary rap verse right there. You know what I mean? I'm Mr. Bubblegum, I'm Mr. Chico Stick. I let's respect da, da, da. Oh, <laughs> come on. Let's respect Fabo. Right. But yeah, I just think uh, yeah, I just, I just think he he's always prioritized lit, um, production more than lyricism, despite him being a better rapper back in the day. But it's just now he really doesn't have is what is his incentive to really be rapping like that anymore? It's like, all right, I'm already a legend. It's not like like y'all gonna listen to this album and then next week it'll be over with. Like I'm not I get it to an extent why he doesn't rap the way he used to. I would like for him to, you know, I would like more, uh, like no more parties in LA songs like that. But it's, I'm yeah. not. If it doesn't happen, it's not something I'm, I'm like extremely disappointed in at this point. I, I I got a question too, Mo. How how long do you think like we can let? Uh, I was about to say Mo. How long do you think we can let Kanye get away with just mumbling and like coming on songs? Like, he's been doing this for some years now. Like, when he first started, I was like, okay, like, it fits on one song. I'll let you get away. But then it became, like, his thing. Like, he just goes, like, hmm, uh, mm, mm. like, in the middle of the song. Like, you can't do that to finish a verse. Yeah, I mean, y'all allowing that. I'm, at this point, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of over it. I'm not even going to count. Like, I gave Don the, like, two listens and then, you know, I did, you know, I went on because it's just like, as I said, it don't, it doesn't resonate with me. And I'm like, the features that he has are cool. They, they are good features, but I'm like, if I want to go listen to those artists, I'll go listen to their music. There wasn't nobody on there that just like, I don't know. They didn't really go anything outside of what they normally do. Fabio, so not like foreign. I, Fabio foreign, don't do that to Fabio. I mean, as I said, if I want to go listen to Fabio, I'll go listen to Fabio. Fabio ain't never snapped like that in his life. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of fans who would disagree. Like, I'm pretty sure he got, like, plenty of songs that, like, you know, his real fans are like, bro, he, he been snapping like this, bro. Y'all just late. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of that. That's his best verse, but he does. I mean, he has, he has plenty of music I can listen to from his that I like. You know, that is his best verse. But as far as the topic of the beef itself um, between Kanye and Drake, I'm gonna just be totally honest with you. Um, I'm, I don't wanna watch two rich middle-aged men beef. Like it's not really entertaining at this point because it's one, the root of why y'all have beef is not so serious to where anybody should be getting hands put on them or this should have been dragged out for this long. It's like, if y'all are going to make full-blown, I, I get that Kanye put that verse out and that was sort of a, a diss or whatever, but Drake is just going to throw, he's not going to make a full-blown Kanye diss song at this point. Yeah. So it's like, if y'all are, I don't want to hear these random subliminal ad-libs every two or three years when you put an album out or these, these leaked verses and things like that. It's just not entertaining to me anymore. You know, like I completely agree. Like I think this situation is kind of I'm. It's kind of it ran its course, man. I I can't even believe we even in 2021 talking about this for real. And I think I don't know. It seemed like Kanye really want to take this past music so bad. Like he want he really kind of want to send this up. 
Like, I, did y'all hear consequence? Like, I'm, no, yeah. like Con- consequence, like that, consequence, the rapper. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear his verse to Drake? Oh, no, I didn't hear his oh verse. consequence, y'all. I ain't know he put a verse out. Oh, y'all. Oh, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. He he dropped the verse to Drake. He started like he was talking about how your parents out here looking like Sonya and Dale. Like, bro, Drake parents been ain't been together since that boy was born. Right. Since like, like the 90s, bro. Like. <laughs> but yeah, he yeah, he dropped the verse. It like it sounds bro, it would have slapped in ninety two. But now <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know. But but that's the thing, it's like and then like he ended it well <clears throat> from the clip that I heard, it ended with him saying like uh send chubs next time that you want to send the shot back or something like that. You know, and I'm like Bro, why are y'all trying to take it here? You know, like no, no, don't do that. Don't because Drake said that too. Drake said that in his song when he said, "What he say? He said next time you you send an Addy, send it to your driver, and not the little timeline." That's what Drake said. No, and, but like and you got And then Drake said, "What what Drake say?" He said, "We all know how the story ends. He ends up, you know, not living." And when yeah. he said that, I'm like, bro, don't, bro, don't do that to Kanye, bro. He made through the wire, bro. No, I don't want to like, see Drake go either, bro, because Drake, you know, he made Hotline Bling, you know what I'm saying? I don't want them dudes to go. But Rashad, you got to think, like, before Drake even dropped the album, you got to think that Kanye sent him the text that he said in the diss track. I sent Drake the text saying, you better chill out, and that's on GD. It's like, bro, like, when you send a man a text like that, it's like, that's you saying, like, bro, like, I'm, you know, it's like if you insinuating it's gonna be more than just music, and then it's like yeah, from there, put that verse out on purpose. That, that's my thing. I mean, like, I don't, I think he was, I mean, the fact that he made it, bro, the fact that he made it, it's like that's that's a sign to show that, like, bro, this isn't this isn't something that's just like I don't know, he, he probably been been doing stuff. It's like that's what I'm saying with the fact that he sent that text. It's like, bro, like you send if if a person sends a text to my phone, telling me like pretty much making the threat that like if I don't chill, something's gonna happen to me, and you put that on a game, I'm like, you telling me that, bro, you trying to take it to a different place, and it's like, bro, we both mad rich, and it's like you really talking like you trying to play with my life, and it's like if you want to act like that, then we could take it there, and that's kind of the vibe that I've been getting because it's like Kanye been doing a lot to trying to seem tough. I mean, Drake been, you know, been trying to seem tough, but as you said, you know, you feel like he he's then caught a couple bodies already. What, so what, what did what did Drake, what did uh, Kanye tweet a couple years ago, right? When Sicko Mode came out, he said Drake stopped texting purple emojis to my phone. Drake was doing that first. I mean, all right, I feel you. That's true. That's true. So I don't know. But I just feel like Kanye's side is the one that just, just seems like, just frankly after seeing Consequence. Because with Con- Consequence even saying like, yeah, you know, blah, 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 but ain't nobody finna run up in my hood. Yeah, don't forget, they didn't let the GDs in the dough. You know, I'm like, bro, like, what are y'all talking about? You know, no, like- that, that's, a, that's one of the craziest parts of this beef too. All these conscious rappers from, from Chicago, like they came up as conscious rappers in that, like in the mid 2000s. That was, Kanye scene wearing the sweater polo and all his boys. Consequence, GLC, we all about knowledge and, you know, striving. And we rap about the struggle to, to get a better future for our kids in, in Chicago. For all these jokers to flip to they don't let the GDs in the do- is wild to me. I mean, GLC was really, I think GLC was like actually a GD though. Like GLC really shout, shout out shout I mean, out to hey, glc shout out to glc that's my boy uh shout out a lee those are my brothers i think i think uh i think kanye has always been surrounded not just even in chicago but just in his career he's always been surrounded by street individuals i'm not i don't know his heritage like chicago is one of those cities where you'll have somebody that's a, a plumber that's like a vice lord you know what I mean? Just because the gang culture, it's kind of like LA to an extent too, where you'll have crips that are like receptionists at a dentist's office. You know what so, I mean? So it's, it's kind of like power. What do you mean? What? Power, power, <laughs> the, the TV show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so you're like, like with, um, 
as far as Kanye, I'm not, he could have been a GD this whole time and we just never knew. I don't know if he, maybe he was keeping his, his GD heritage hey, under wraps. Well, but what did he say, Jelani? Knew I was gang affiliated, got on TV and told on me. I mean, I think that was, that was, that was like a metaphor for the city of Chicago, but he could have been, exactly. it could have been in double entendre. It could have been, you know what I mean? He could have been subliminally letting us know, you know, the GDs can't come through the door. 14 years ago, he might've been trying to tell us that. Right. But yeah, I, I don't know. I can see Drake seems like the type of guy where we've heard stories of um, him getting certain people beat up over like petty stuff. But I don't know if you could really do that to Kanye like that. Like Kanye has armed security just like you. He has money just like you to be able to get somebody touched. So I, like I said, I don't want to see two middle-aged men beefing over leaked songs and things like that. It's, it's not that serious at the end of the day. I mean, you know, I like I completely agree. Like I from what just even from the songs that has been that's been released from if you listen to the songs, it's kind of like Drake is like is like, bruh, like I really don't even, like you're burnt out. I'm really kind of over this. Like y'all keep playing with me. But then it's like Kanye, but on Kanye's side, Kanye's side is more of like, bruh, like he's he keeps talking like he wants smoke i don't know that from what i that's what i hear from him and so that's why i'm like it's it's not it's a difference when one side is like all right i want smoke and then one side is like bro i'm really kind of over this but if you want to take it there we can you know that's there's a whole there's two completely different vibes that's that comes with that you know so that's how i feel about it you know what do you got to say rashad I have no new information to say. I mean, Drake sent the purple emojis two years ago. So Drake, don't come around doing that flip stuff. You know what what's what half of that is, Drake. Drake mix. You know what half that is. Flipping around and playing the victim card when you was the one that incited the whole thing. What are I wouldn't say he incited. Well, he didn't incite the whole thing, bro. Like he slept with Kim. And then okay. he sent the purple just... devil emoji. And then he put <laughs> it in sicko mode. The Wendy Williams podcast. Left. I just Cut the right. <laughs> Cut the lights. And the Calabasas. I'm right into Kanye house. I feel you. I mean, you know, none of this stuff is confirmed. <laughs> so, so I did find it. You know what? I, I, I did feel for Kanye. I, I feel like this was like very lightweight, disrespectful by Kim. I don't know if she did this on purpose, but she posted, uh, she posted when like Kanye's album came out, she posted like a screenshot of her listening to Kanye's, song, like one of the songs on Instagram or story and had the volume all the way down. And then when she posted Drake's song, she had the volume at like, at like 80, but you know, when they give like the iPhone one and the two high right now, yeah, that volume right there. I just like I, I don't know if I'm here with my girl. Like I don't know if they're still together or not. But it's like, damn, don't post my like I'm beefing with this dude. Don't post you listening to his song on your story. Like that. I don't know. That that would have maybe I'm petty or that's insecure or anything like that. I don't want my Why girl you think listening they got to my the song. It's I mean, it's, Drake's fault, I guess, huh? <laughs> I don't know. It might be. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't want to. It's just nasty, man. Like, this is all real. Like, if these were like lesser tier artists, like, as far as their relevancy and money wise, this would be like a love and hip hop Hollywood storyline. Yeah, facts. I'm just, I'm just not here for the drama at this point. Yeah, but I ain't gonna cap. Drake gave him some bars. Drake gave him, Drake gave him the bars that, like, in my opinion, they kind of like, all right, let's just, let's just end it here. Cause it's just like Kanye's not gonna be able to reply with anything of that caliber. Like 7 a.m. at Birdie Path, bro. Like when he's as you said with that line that you referred to earlier, like the next time get that address to your driver and make that your destination as opposed to uh post out of desperation. It's like that's real, bro. It's kind of like, like, man, I don't know. It's just kind of like, let's just stop, you know. Let's stop all this tough stuff. Let's like, if you're gonna do it, do it. But after this, I'm kind of good. I will hope that. That's what Kanye said. No, he didn't. He but said, can you even said. picture Kanye and like a caravan of people rolling up to Drake's address? Like, like what would that even look like? I can't even fathom that in my head. 
But, and that's the thing on both ends, bro. I'm like, bro, neither one of y'all finna take it there. It's just like there's no reason to take it there. So it's just like, why RP, is it? RPXX Tentacion. Read, read that it. late in the podcast. I can say that. RPXX Tentacion. That's all mm-hmm. I got to say. You gotta stop putting that that body on that man's resume. Like, come on, bro. I don't, I don't, I don't want to read that. I don't think that beef was that serious to him to where he would he, he would do something like that. But I do think Drake has gotten some people touched behind the scenes in Toronto. Like, if you look at the guys that he runs around with, and things like that. This man, he has multiple hit records where he's openly shouting out Hell's Angels, and I don't think people really like paid attention to that. It was like, like on God's plan, this man is openly like. Yeah, eighty one. I bring the crashes to the park. Like that's a that's a Hell's Angels reference. If you know what he's talking about, you know what I'm saying. So he, he I had no idea that God's plan was that dark. You just gotta pay attention. Two C Slide is a song about killing people. Let's get yeah. that out. Oh the no, way. no. I, I think I think everybody knew that. I think everybody knew that. I still think some people didn't process how wild of a song that he no, made. I knew that because he because he rapped about killing next day. <laughs> it always goes back to that. But with the with the mob ties, that whole song was about. I'm like, dang, bro, how is this on the radio? And then the sicko mode talking about Kim, and you got to hear that everywhere because it was the biggest hit. It was that in Mo Bamba a couple years ago, like, 2018. Yeah. yeah, you know, I will say like, like, cause one of my friends, he he's a big person on. He believes the Drake conspiracy as well. And the only thing that I will say, because, you know, it's kind of like, why? Like, why would he do this? You know, but if you think about it, the song, I'm upset when he says 50,000 on my head is disrespect, you know, and I was like, really thinking about it, you know, X would be the person to do some stupid stuff like that, to be like, you know, because he wasn't always in the right state of mind. So that's why I'm like, that would be the only reason. I would think. But honestly, at the same time, it's still kind of like, bro, that's not even that. I don't know. Like, Drake is just out here. And I got to tell him, chill. Sprite got me on payroll. Let that man live. I said, that was seven years ago. Drake been killing people for 10 years. All right, bro. So are, we, are we talking about Drake like he's Ted Bundy now? <laughs> that, that, that's what Kanye said. Kanye said, "Stop sending me the purple devil emojis, bro. You killed XX Senta. Don't do that to me, bro." So you think like everybody in the industry just knows Drake did catch a body? Yeah, and everybody just yes. chill. Yes, he's for sure got people beat up though. We know, like I don't know yeah. if you remember. That's the part. No, Russ that's getting confirmed. people beat up. Russ getting people beat up. Drake getting people put under. All right, so like on that though, we gonna go ahead. <laughs> we, just, we, just, we, just, we just snitching on our favorite rappers today. Yeah, we gonna keep moving, but <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah, as I said, good album. Um, as I said, my favorite song is "Love All." Um, I like I like the Jay Z uh, verse. I think TSU was a good song. I see a lot of people gravitating towards that. I see. Girls Want Girls was the most streamed song, which was crazy to me. I thought that song was cool, but... but Lil Baby, the hottest rapper in the world. Yeah, and I think it's... I think also that lesbian line and just... It's, it, it is good sonically, you know, so... But I don't know. I, w- I was kind of like... Uh, I felt like, man... Oh, uh, what are you going to say? Good, bro. Oh, I was just going to say, when I heard uh, TSU, as I said, I heard it as a leak a couple months ago. And when I heard it for the first time, I remember thinking, I was like, why is Drake attacking some some poor girl so personally like this? Because you could tell this is like, he knew a chick that literally like went through this whole situation. And he was like, yeah, this is my next song. The bigger question, why is he rapping about girls in undergrad at the age of 36? I'm not going to lie. I thought about that too. I was like, bro, you, a lot of your topics, if you listen, he talks about how like, he tells girls like, I know you're not a baby. I know you're not a little girl. I know you grown, right? You know, you 18. <laughs> like, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'll be, I'll be hearing that. I'll be like, dang, bro, but, you know, I let it rock. I'll be hearing is... lines all the time now that I'm older of like rappers, like Kanye had an old line, like in his uh, demo days. Uh, and then she just turned 18. So last week she was against the law. So her birthday, I put in, like, you know, I don't want to finish the line, but 
it's just like, dude, like, you were 20, you know what I'm saying? Like, if that was 20 years ago, you were, like, 24. That's creepy, bro. And then, you know, like, I don't know. I hear a bunch of lines that are just, like, the girls that are 18 to 20, like, and rappers rapping about them at ages 25 and up. It's just, just weird. You remember uh, a <laughs> song, that Nelly song, Ride With Me? Yeah. She could be 18 with an attitude. <laughs> Listen, you can't you can't do that now. You know what I'm saying? It's just right. Not, it's just not acceptable. You, know I mean? <laughs> you gotta have the age a little bit when you make these references. But I was uh I was listening to the radio the other day and I was thinking about songs uh and just lines that wouldn't be acceptable today. And I was listening to Mac Main on Every Girl in the World. How did I know you was gonna say that? <laughs> I knew you, I knew I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> Bruh, when he said I shave B cause with the retards, I was like, yo. <laughs> yo, we should have we should have been throwing him in jail at that moment. Like I, I, thought, I we... thought the line you was about to say was the Molly Cyrus line. The fact that he said that, I'm like, bro, so he committed multiple offenses in this line. He committed yeah. felonies in that verse. Facts. I exchanged I don't even want to say that word. Baby. What a wild song. And that was a major hit. That song was getting played like every five minutes. This was not like a low-key song that nobody <laughs> heard. Everybody heard this man request Hannah Montana. <laughs> and nobody was like, oh yeah, we probably should say something about that. Right. <laughs> and like three years later, she really was twerking and all that. Yeah, that was that's wild. <laughs> Yeah, this man. <laughs> and Drake, the um, the in my what Matt in my feelings, the other one, the um, the the New Orleans bounce one. Oh, um, nice for what? Nice for what? When he's <clears throat> high school picks, he was even bad then. And it's like, bro, what? Well, I know you've seen a video. Of, I mean, we Drake is kind of indestructible, so that we everybody just skip past this. I know you saw the video of him kissing the the seventeen year old on stage. Yeah, yeah, from like 2009, eight, uh, 2010. But no, yeah. but look, but okay. <clears throat> I'm going to sound wild defending him at all on this one. <laughs> but <clears throat> it was just like, he asked after the fact. So when he found out, he was like, whoa, 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 you got to get off the stage, baby girl. But he should have asked beforehand. No, nah, he was just He's like, you're going to get me in trouble or something like that. He said it in his, like, seductive Aubrey voice. He didn't kick her off stage immediately the way he should have. Right. Yo, so as I was listening to the album, I was listening to um, FN fans. Can we – we could we passed the cursing point, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. Know, we're almost 12. Yeah, so when I was listening to fucking fans, and I was like, I don't know. He was talking about how, like, you know, you're not happy with your new dude. And I don't know if he is talking about Rihanna. I doubt it, you know, because I feel like it's been a minute. But do you think him, her and A$AP Rocky really happy? Like, when you see pictures of them, bro, like, do they look happy? Like, does that look like a relationship that like, you just like, yeah. Because, you know, A$AP Rocky talk like he in the he in the time of his life. Like, this is this was the moment he's been waiting for. But what are you finna say, Jelani? I I mean, I I don't know these people, so I can't really say whether or not they're happy. I think they <laughs> you know, I think they look good in pictures together, you know what I mean? I feel like that's the standard now for 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 a relationship of happiness. Are y'all like when y'all post that picture together, are they gonna call y'all goals? I feel like that's yeah. the main uh relationship objective at this point. So they they check that one off. But as far as them getting married and stuff like that, I, I don't, you know, I have no clue whatsoever. Yeah. No, I feel that, bro. Like, I don't know. It's just it listening to that song, and then it made me think, like, you know, like, who could he be talking about? And then just, like, you know, that could be a possibility of, like, I was like, it could be Rihanna and ASAP. But, you know, like, it I just makes me. What were you going to say? I, know, I saw some people on Twitter. I don't know if you remember this story a couple months ago about uh, – him flying out the girl and her boyfriend overseas. And they ended oh, up yeah. I saw some people on Twitter saying the song was about her. It's not like your, back, your boyfriend backstage at the show or whatever. Mm. But that was another thing. Drake made Georgia's interlude when Georgia Smith was like 
17, 19. A, oh my God, it's that young, bro. We, we, we can't just throw any numbers out there. She was, yeah, bro. She, she, she was, was only like a year younger than us. Like, <laughs> I told George Smith, she's like 24 now, I want to say. Yeah, she, yeah she's got to be around that, bro. But she definitely wasn't no 17. She wasn't no 17. <laughs> like, <laughs> we just, yo, we trying to get Drake on in jail. <laughs> For real, bro. How old is she, Rashad? She's 24. I'm I'm looking up when this when this uh 2017. So that was four years ago. So George, yeah. you're right. She wasn't 19. She was 20. I mean, I wrong. Drake was definitely like 30. At Drake that point, was so definitely yeah. like 32. I mean, hey man, you know everybody got their preference, bro. He ain't breaking no laws. We ain't got no right to judge. You feel me? This conversation went places I didn't expect it to go. You know, <laughs> on this yeah. man resume. I feel like we don't like law and order SVU. Right. <laughs> hey, but speaking of like, you know, men and women relationships, I know y'all saw that girl post earlier this week about uh, how she asked to do for a hundred dollars. And then he had told her that he got bills to pay, but you know, if he got a little something extra uh, left over, that he'll, you know, go ahead and try and do what he can. And then she got mad, posted it. And it was talking about how she got dudes who could pay, like, who would send her $500, no question asked. So, like, and calling him broke for saying, like, I ain't got this honey right now. Like, how y'all feel about that, man? Like, should do you feel like if you got priorities, should you just be paying these girls? Like, just... Just so she, that she don't have to worry about the little stresses in her life, I guess, you know. Uh, if you if you were my girl and I was in a financial situation where I could give you some money, I wouldn't have any issue doing it. Um, but if you just a random woman and we getting to know each other, first off, you say that you have these other guys that can give you five hundred. Like why? why weren't these like the first people that you were hitting up for this money? Like, why am I? Exactly. Like, I seem, it seems like, you, should be, you know, there should be some other guys higher on your priority list to be hitting up besides me. If you know for a fact, you could get $500 from these people, you know? Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 I just feel like now we're, we're in a place uh, where it, it's more culturally acceptable to ask people you don't really know like that for money like in like GoFundMe culture and things like that. Uh, I, I just don't know. I, I just think you should have, you should, it should, you should have know at least, I don't know how long she knew that guy that she was texting or whatever, but you should at least know somebody for at least like, I really want to say about a year before, at least before you really be asking them for money, especially with a substantial amount, like $500. Yeah. <clears throat> Facts. But yeah, it's, it's, do you know what, like, the background of their relationship was? No, nah, I have no clue. I mean, it couldn't have been that deep for her to just lead this man on red, like, for him saying that. Because I feel like, I don't know, that's one of the things with today's, you know, with today's culture and just relationships today, I feel like if a girl's really there for you, it's, you know, she'll understand that, like, yo, he got bills to pay so yeah maybe at this exact moment he can't do x y and z but give him you know a little time or whatever but a lot of these girls i feel they just they be like nah if you can't do it right now then you broke and that's why you know that goes into the question you know a lot of people ask the question like why do g girls like you know drug dealers and like you know dudes who are like you know hustlers or whatever and it's like, why don't they like guys with nine to five? The nine to fives, you know, they got to wait for their next paycheck. And it's like the hustling dude, you know, he finna come up a couple, you know, a couple bands to tomorrow maybe. So I don't know, man. Like, I don't know the relationship that they have, but I just think it's crazy. Like, how you feel about Rashad? Um, <clears throat> I pretty much agree with both of y'all. Uh, I, I don't think anybody's going to be like, yeah, I totally agree with the girl. Yeah. But, uh, I, I didn't see the actual tweet. I saw everybody's reaction to the tweet. You know how like people go viral off their reactions when they're like so and so blah blah blah. And the one, the first one I saw was 
ah, oh, there it is. The, the money debates come up always when run is due. <laughs> it's like these debates always come up at the end of the month, the beginning of the next month and stuff like that. So I just right. thought that was funny. Uh, yeah, man, uh, it's really just like, I don't think you have any room. It, this was another viral tweet. No one has any room to call anyone broke after asking someone for money. Like, what yeah. type of sense does that make? Right. Like, I want you to le- legitimately, like, let's think about this in a logical sense. I ask you for money because I need money. You say, uh, I have the money, but I'd rather not give you this money. And your reaction is, bro, I thought you were the one that need to. Imagine going on the street and some homeless person asks you for money because they see you putting away change from, you know, you came out of Subway. And uh, you like, I'm sorry, bro. I, I can't give it to you, man. I, I got to use this 2 $3 on, on parking. And they're like, you broke anyway. How would you react to the homeless person? You would turn around like, bro, you sleeping on the... I ain't even going to say that. I ain't even going to go... No, it was going to take a left but, turn. But, but, but get you, real you, guys get the, you guys get the point. You guys get the yeah. point. That don't make no sense. No, I, I definitely... Um... I, I definitely, it's just a lot of people, like I said, people are more, I feel like this is a social media thing too, because we have so much of our, our time is spent in these like open discussions where people are sharing information and we know things about strangers on the internet and we're all sharing our thoughts. And I just think people are just, <clears throat> like I said, asking people that don't really know like that for money. But I feel like it was a certain point. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not mad at any women for wanting a data dude that has money. Like if if some uh if some rich woman wanted me that had money, some woman drug dealer was like, yo, I want you to be my boyfriend, and she was cute and I liked her and she went to trick on me, I'm not gonna be like, no, you can't spend your money on me. I don't so so you deal with a drug dealer, time. Jelani? If it came to you, you deal with a woman drug, drug dealer. dealer? I mean, what type of, I mean, it, it depends what we talk. I'm not trying to date like the female Pablo Escobar or nothing like that. We're like, I got to change my whole lifestyle and be driving around the dirt and stuff like that. But like if some girl I dated was like a local weed dealer and she wanted to spend money on me or something like that. Yeah, I'm getting tricked on. I'm not like, I'm not uh, objecting I'm, to that. I'm, I'm asking because my boy, he was dating someone who was in a gang. I was about, I'm on about to shout it out, but he That's was dating different. someone, a gang member. Yeah. I, I think it's the same thing because drugs and gang member the drug game, you know, one bad deal or whatever, you know, like you owe me money and you like you ain't even know and you in the middle of it of the gunfire and you just trying to chill. I don't know if being a drug dealer and being a gang banger the same. I'm gonna just throw that out there. Is like, the, it, what you finna say? On. No, I'm saying is she like is she just in the gang or is she like actively banging? Like, yeah, it, it was like something where she was in the middle of some like, I think she messed with <clears> someone <throat> else who was also in the gang. So when my boy started dating her, he had some type of static for bro. And then that's when he was like, all right, I think it's best to distance myself from this situation. I feel that. I mean, yeah, that's still a little bit different situation than if you just like your girl, a drug dealer. Because, I mean, like, yeah, your girl a drug dealer, then, yeah, it's like anybody could be just running in your crib because, you know, y'all got to work on y'all, you know, people in and out, all the different stuff. But, you know, if your girl just in the gang and then, like, her ex in the gang, because, I mean, the thing is, regardless if she's in the gang or not, there's plenty of girls with ex gang bangers who going to want smoke, who going to want smoke. So, regardless if she's in that gang or not, you probably would have still had smoke at your doorstep. So... I would eat, like, but, you know, I choose wisely, I guess, you know. <laughs> that's, that's a good topic for next episode. Of what, what do you do when, uh, how, did, how did you guys all react to the death threats from your significant other's uh, exes? Save that for next episode. I mean, I ain't got no death threats from none of them, because, you know. You ain't know. lived life yet, Mo. Bruh, I, remember I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you gotta save it. You gotta save it, Jelani. Next episode, we saving the next episode. I got you. It's not even a threat, but I got you. I save it for next episode. <laughs> I'm, I'm still stuck in your boy dating a gangbanger chick. Like, is he like? Where's he meeting these thugged out chicks at? Like, I've never. We, we went to school at Georgia State. We was in the middle of downtown Atlanta, so she was just chilling outside of uh, his apartment, and uh, you know, pretty much. <laughs> 
she shot her shot with him and they started talking or whatever and they started dating and that's how it happened she she i don't even know if she went to georgia state you know how people are like they always come around the, the campus they don't go to the school yeah but georgia state is even more because it's like in the middle of a big city right yeah that's that's uh a wild scenario i never dated a thug a, a thug out chick like that that was like really like from the set you know what i'm saying <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, that's wild. Funny scenario. Yeah, man. What else y'all got for this week? Man, I feel like we 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 covered like a wide array of topics, man. We we you know put cases on Drake. You know, <laughs> <laughs> one one, one last them. thing I wanted to say as well: Bobby Schmurda put out a freestyle, and he's rapping about guns. Bobby Schmurda went to jail for like six, seven years. <laughs> for guns. And the first thing he does when he comes out is rap about guns and killing people. Let's see how that works for you, Mr. Bobby Smurda. I mean, it's the difference when you're not actually doing it. Yeah. Yeah, you can rap with anything you want. I mean, it's, that was the problem. He was actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it wasn't just raps. <laughs> Yo, have you ever listened to, to the song, bro? Like, like recently, and just like heard like the type of confessions he had, and that's line after line after line. It was like, I, I'm with this dude. I'm with this dude. I'm with AR. It, that junk is so crazy to me. I can never get over it when I listen to it. Man. No, no, Meech really, really caught a body about a week ago. Like he wasn't just <laughs> just saying that just to say it. Like, no, these are actual people. That he's rapping about on his viral song. For real. Bruh, so quick random topic. Yo, do y'all like plastic surgery? I'll um, say I, I don't like BBLs. <coughs> to okay. each their own. If you if you it's some are better than others. You know what I mean? I've seen some that are just more it doesn't it doesn't uh it's not like so dramatic that you, you would immediately notice that they have plastic surgery. Right. Um, some are, are it look, I, I feel like they're um, probably should have went to a different doctor. You know, I feel like you got like the, the, the Groupon version of plastic surgery. Right. They just paid the full price, but uh, the teacher's own, you know what I mean? That's what you want to do. That's not the question, Jelani. The question is, do you like plastic surgery or not? Like on women, like do I like yeah. the look? Yes. Like I said, some women, some women, it doesn't look bad. Like some women, it looks good. Some women, it, it, it's less noticeable. They got like minor work done. But like in other cases, I don't like when it's so automatically noticeable that it's like, all right, you kind of look like a like a like a cartoon character right now. You know what I mean? But yeah, if it's, if it's like some minor work or something like that, I'm not mad at it. Yeah. So look, I. I don't mind the subtleness, you know, like little improvements. Like I followed this one IG chick one time and uh and like she got like, you know, breast implants, but it was like to go from like a B to like a C. You know, so it's just like light enhancement. She's just bored. No, nah, but it's like little stuff like that does kind of like actually it'll probably like an A to a C, I will say. It's like so but, <clears throat> Yeah, you know, it's it ain't nothing crazy, but it's just kind of like okay you know it's something to look at in a sense you know um but the reason i brought this up is because i was watching the no jumper podcast and he, and adam 22 did an interview with this chick named mary magdalene i saw what you yes yeah, yeah. i didn't watch the interview but i saw the, the little thumbnail and she looked yeah crazy. like bruh i watched that and it was a crazy like it was a crazy insight because she was talking about, I've always looked at the girls who get the crazy plastic surgery and, you know, they look like, like, you know, they have the bimbo look or whatever. And I just be like, do you think you look cute? Like, you know, what's going through your mind? Like, you can't think you look cute. And the thing is, and she explained it. She was like, nah, like, I don't, I want to look trashy. Like, she says she wants to look fake. It's, you know, it, that's just her thing, you know? She's okay with it. You know, she wants to just look and fake it possible. She also was talking about how, like, she got injections on her, like, on her vagina. That was crazy. 
Like I was like, she like she said she almost died. And but then she was just talking about, yeah, but I look at the plastic surgery like a tattoo. It's nothing, you know? Like, and yeah, her life was just crazy and sad. But regardless, I think it's just hearing that, <clears throat> as I said, just the fact that she was just like, she don't let nobody else do her makeup. She was like, she wants to look as trashy as possible. That's that's just the look that she's aiming for. Full circle moment too. R.I.P. Donda. But um, facts, yeah. All right, so yeah, we 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 just. Hey, chill out. <laughs> chill out. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. So the uh, so the uh, so the uh, hey, 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 look, like so plastic surgery. I agree with y'all. I don't hey, like man. this too extreme <laughs> what that, right? But the thing is, it's like with someone like a Gabrielle Union had plastic, you know, she adjusted the nose a little bit. Every person, when they get famous, they fix their teeth. Doja Cat getting new teeth. Hmm. Okay, does that count? Those are little adjustments. That's not their natural self. That, yeah. see, because, like, look. All of us, if we just, you know, if, if they didn't tell us, we'd be like, oh, yeah, Gabrielle Union, yeah, for sure. All due respect to D-Wade, because I know how you get. Uh, Doja Cat, same thing. But I don't know. So so I think, like you guys said, if it's something minor like that, and it looks, Sierra. Sierra, remember when she came out, her nose looked completely different than what it looked like now. You know what I'm saying? If it was something like that. You know, I but. I was going to say a different surgery for Sierra. Oh, chill out, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> he went to the schoolyard one, man. But uh, yeah, bro, I wonder how did that how did that rumor start, bro? Because I ain't gonna cap, bro. Me being like eight years old, I thought Sierra was a man. Like I don't know how that started. Oh, how did these How did these rumors go to every <laughs> elementary school in the United States? That's what I want to know. I remember the blog. I remember the, the 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 real rumor like really took off when goodies came out because people were like that was about <laughs> that was about her having her, her dick cut off and put in a jar like that I remember somebody telling me that in like fourth or fifth grade the goodie in the jar <laughs> Yo. was her old dick <laughs> like, obviously this isn't true but it's like fam like why why were they like why did they throw these accusations on this random woman for real bro you but you know it'd be your people you know trying to take you down man you know haters gonna hate <laughs> that's a different type of hate though like to say that you, you're lying about your gender Bro, like don't, what? don't ever hate on me to tell me i was born with both and i got one of them chopped off at birth don't yeah, hate I never, on me like that bro you had a vagina when you were born ha ha like i never had any one tell you <laughs> really you, yeah i remember they said lady gaga was a man when she was born too i remember that and then she she went on stage and she she had like a uh she she did this on purpose. Like she wore a dress, but she had like a, a fake dick underneath her dress. Yeah, like a plastic dick. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, bro. I I don't know. I guess you know some some women be having them them bones in their neck that be a little too big. You know, the men start saying like, "Hey, I don't know." All right, but. all right. We, we officially like you guys said. <laughs> like Jelani was right. We should have cut it off when I said RIP Donna. That was yeah, yeah, that was because right, now because now Mo, hey, Mo is, is both y'all, bro. We, hey, it's a one a.m. podcast. We record this at one a.m. And you know when you do that, you run the risk of saying something like the, the baby. Put your camera light phone on if you you know what I'm saying. So, but before we get into that moment all the way, we are gonna cut it off right here, man. Shout out to all the women, man. Shout out to all the black women, all the black queens out there. You know what I'm saying we salute you and support you. The whole LGBT community. The whole LGBT community, you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, just because they, they neck a little bony, bro, don't mean, don't mean nothing. It's all good. Yo, but little they, they only said that about her for real. Really she good, was, bro. You like, said that about her. Hold on, hold on. Oh, go ahead. And I said, they only said that about her for real because she was, she was like tall. They did the same thing with Meg. Like, I feel like any like tall black woman, they kind of, they did the same thing with Serena too. I mean, they didn't go as far as saying that they really had dicks, but like they made like, Little masculine joke, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, people be intimidated, man. Right. Just like with pit bulls. That's why people don't like pit bulls, bro. They be just sitting there looking like this. <laughs> why when you say pit bulls, I'm thinking about Mr. 305. 
<laughs> I'm picturing a pit bull in like a all white suit smoking a cigar. Like, damn, niggas afraid of pit bull. I ain't know that. <laughs> <laughs> bro, maybe the old pit bull, bro. Right, we, we in a pit bull. Right, when he first came out. That man saw where the bag was and never looked back. <laughs> he said, I ain't doing no more songs with Khaled. <laughs> Straight oh, yeah. flow right in Neo. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> uh, for real. Uh, what's it called? Bro, this man, Rashad, last week just threw out a random uh, sam- uh, segment, didn't tell nobody, talking about uh, parting words or whatever. So, I mean, I guess we can. <laughs> We can do that again, y'all. Oh no, facts. I had to. I had to be on the spot. Like, oh yeah, Leah. You gotta respect the Leah. Yeah, that's why. Like, I was quiet at first. I was just like, bro. Right. You talked about it in a pre-pod meeting. Don't even do that. We, we did talk about, about it. In the we did talk about, it, but I forgot it to the end. I was like, oh yeah, we did talk about this. You right? The uh, I guess y'all wanna y'all got any parting? How? You, what was it exactly, Rashad? Parting shots, you know. She Parting shots. As inspired by the sports reporters, R.P. John Saunders. Um, yeah, my parting shot for the week, I don't really have one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, um, I guess really it's just been a little rocky week for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you notice, I haven't uploaded on the channel all week. So, uh, man, just appreciate those around you while you have them. The only thing that we're promised is the moment. Yesterday is history. Like, who said that? Justin Timberlake and a bunch of other songwriters. And tomorrow is in promise. So the only thing we are promised is right now. And, uh, you know, so just embrace those around you. And, you know, that's it. I'll go real quick. Uh, my parting shot uh, for this week, I would say, college football is back. NFL is back. I just want to say, if you get invited to somebody's tailgate, uh, please respect the fact that you're at somebody else's tailgate. Uh, do not embarrass the person that invited you. Conduct yourself well. Uh, don't get so faded that by the time the game starts, you can't you can't really even enjoy the game or watch the game or handle your liquor properly anymore. Just conduct yourself well at the tailgates this fall. Be respectful of other people's food, how many plates you're getting, and things like that. You know, that's 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 a shout out saying. Uh, all right. And then for me, um, I know I brought it up. But I ain't going to even cap. I ain't really have none. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but now I guess, you know, uh, I'll give a shout out to, you know, a shout out to Max Kellerman. You know, I feel like his departure from first take kind of went unnoticed. But I had you clicked on YouTube one day and it was like Max Kellerman's last day, two days ago. <laughs> I was like, damn. Damn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh Stephen A got him out of here. Bruh, for real. You see, he got a whole new lineup. He got Tim Tebow on Fridays. He got <laughs> he got Michael Irvin. Uh I think I don't know if Michael Irvin's the new permanent host. He, but he's I, on Mondays. Yeah. So I guess they're just gonna do like different people. And yeah, but hey, shout out to Max Kellerman, man. You know, keep your head up. Hey, real quick before we before we log off, did yeah. y'all see the pants Michael Irvin had on at the at the, at the game yesterday? Yo, did I see the jeans. Yeah, bro, why is this man Michael Irvin, sixty five years old, wearing Amiri jeans like, and not just like normal Amiri jeans, like the splattered paint JoJo JoJo Siwa Amiri jeans? Like, I, I don't know, that kind of bothered me a little bit. And he had a Gucci belt on. Right. He talked in the letterman. <laughs> nasty work. Very nasty. Right. Nah, yeah. Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin different, bro. Lot, bro. <laughs> Michael Irvin different. That's the name of the episode. Michael Irvin different. <laughs> like, for real, bro. Like, you see the video of him at, like, the at the pep rallies or whatever, bro. I'll be like, oh, this man be on one. I couldn't imagine playing with him. Made a really inappropriate joke, but you know, remember when he recovery. Oh, I joke about that. I almost, almost said something real. Yeah. So salute yeah. to all the, the all the cowboys in the nineties. You know what I'm saying. Salute to all the cowboys. You know what I'm saying. Salute to Magic Johnson. You know, 
<laughs> you know, his uh, his interview from the '90s resurfaced about a about a week ago, and it went viral. And he was talking about you know how he was living back then. Hey man, you know professional athletes used to live like rock stars. They're a little more tame now, I think, because of the internet. You know, all your moves are you know on on blast and stuff. <clears throat> But, yeah, man, salute to all the 90s uh, sports stars and stuff like that, you know. And I had something else, but I literally forgot it. Did you ever hear, real, like, this is the last thing, and then we really don't get a pop here. Did you really hear the story about, this is like, in the late 90s, um, Michael Irvin was throwing the Cowboys, and somebody was in a chair getting a haircut, and Michael Irvin walked in, and he told the person to get up in the middle of the haircut because he wanted to get his haircut. And the dude said no. And Michael Scissor, Michael Irvin went and grabbed some scissors and stabbed dude in the neck. What? This is like documented. Like you Google this. He like this is like legal records of this. I mean, I don't think he, I don't think the player ended up pressing charges any further or anything like that. But no, this is like actually a real thing that happened. What? Yeah, just just to piggyback off your point about athletes used to be wilding. Dang. Nah, I ain't hear about that one. They used to do lines and then, like, go out and have, like, a pro football Hall of Fame career. <laughs> and that's high law. <laughs> edit, 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 Rashad, edit. Nah, that's a fact. You remember in the, uh, the last dance, you know, Michael Jordan talking about, man, when I joined the team, shoot, everybody was back there shooting up. I was like, dang, bro, like. <laughs> yeah, I was just watching. I didn't do it. You know, I saw right. that. I walked in on them. They yeah. all have women. They all have women always doing drugs. I walked in, I said, and they looked at me like this, and I walked right back on out. See, I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm from a small town. You know, we just went to church and went to school and then went home, you know? So right, I went straight back to the gym. Right. <laughs> in Bugs Bunny don't do that type of thing. <laughs> They're making a, um, a doc on uh, that Dennis Rodman weekend, too. Yeah, I heard they're making a movie out of it. I think it's like an actual movie, like the 48 hours. Oh, wow. That's not lit. Yeah, they got to get, uh, <laughs> they got to get my dog from Candyman to play Dennis. <laughs> For real? No, I'm saying he should, he should be the pick. I don't know who else. Have you seen Candyman yet? No, I heard they tried to make it like a, like a social justice movie at the same time. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, I, I got to go see it. I'm probably going to go see it uh, sometime this week. Uh, you know, it's going to be my first movie going to go see in theaters since the pandemic. <clears throat> since the penny. What was yeah. the last one you saw? Um, Shoot, what was the last movie I went to go see? I think, man, for real, it's been, it's been a minute. I think has... What was the movie with uh do Ryan Reynolds? Uh the superhero movie. Ah, uh, it's like not Daredevil. Um, but Deadpool. huh? Deadpool. Deadpool, yes. Uh I think I went to go see Deadpool too. Either I think that was the last one, or it might have been for real the Avenger movie. Mm-hmm. The last yeah. one I saw funny story was um it was february 2020 it's actually not funny at all it's pretty sad watched the photograph and i walked up to the booth because you know I, I moved out or whatever i walked up to the booth it was my first time in the movie theater in the new state i was living in and uh i was like hey photograph and, you know one ticket she's like you mean two and i thought she said something else so i was just like yeah so she charged me for two tickets because she thought that i had someone with me watch the photograph so here i am watching this romantic movie paid for two tickets just by my lonesome and you know it was already a movie about romance so i just felt that much more single when i watched it but you know it's all good because i moved mid it was all right it was all right it was all right (laughs) i don't know bro i don't don't really i can't cap bro the keith stanfield bro like it's not even that he's a I don't think he's a bad actor. He's just a weird actor, bro. Like, I like the way he plays his characters is just so, like, kind of weird at times. I'm kind of like, like, his characters are always, like, weird people. And I feel like he incorporates the weirdness into them. Right, like, he's just kind of playing himself. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what I felt watching. Because I, I just watched that movie. Like, me and my girl watched it, I think, like, last week. And I was just like, I think we got, we got, like, halfway through. Then I was just kind of like, I'm I'm over it. But. Do you remember, <laughs> you remember earlier this year? I forget even who the other actor was. It was a Zendaya movie. We were, like, arguing about macaroni and cheese or something like that. Oh, yeah, John David Washington. Oh yeah, that's that oh we, was like we don't discuss that movie on this channel. Then, we don't discuss like, that movie. Yeah, I, I saw people discussing that for like one weekend, and then I never heard anybody talk about it again. The Milk Bro. Marie movie. We don't discuss that. Movie. <laughs> shout, shout out, shout out. You know, Zendaya. You know what I'm saying? Always, as always. Oh yeah, Tom, Tom Baggett, girl. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Tom, he got her by Choco. He telling like unfunny jokes and she laughing like ah, ah. Bro, like when I seen that, I was so dang salty. And then she tweeted a meme about it afterwards, after it went viral. I was like, don't, don't, don't make no jokes about your own memes, bro. Like, don't do that right now. Have a little res- little respect for me. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that that's how I feel, you know. Sorry, bro. It's all good, you know what I'm saying? I still had it, you know. I'm Ray J. <laughs> I feel it. Keep telling yourself that you believe it, man. You know, you was the first person I saw hyping her up though before before it was like a, a national thing. Yeah, before she was of age. I was I wasn't of age either. I was gonna say don't, yeah, don't get that twisted. Let's, let's specify. I was I was not of age either. Don't do that. Really like a year older than her. Like, I was 17. <laughs> yeah, she was 16. We were, we were all teenagers. It's not right. okay, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> when you beat the Zendaya allegations. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all right, okay, last thing for real. Yo, y'all seen these R. Kelly, like, trials? Like, how they got the, they got the little boy, where well, they got the boys coming in, talking about how he was, like, you know, doing his thing to them, how, like, it's allegedly he would make girls on their birthday, like, they would have to fight over the cake. Like, yeah, it was just, it's just a lot of craziness, man. I'm not even going to lie. Like, yeah, he going down. Flavor of R. Kelly. That <laughs> 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 fight for the cake, remember? Like, what? Like, is this Survivor or something like that? He's a, he's a nasty guy, man. The Pied Piper is a, is a sick individual. Um, yeah. I, just, I just find it really, it's just wild to watch society adapt to know that there was a long time where I would say up until about maybe like 2014, 2015, where you could publicly do a song with this man and nobody would trip. Nobody would say anything about it. It wasn't like a thing that we really, like we knew about the cases, we made jokes about it and stuff like that. But I just don't think publicly we really like fully digested of how creepy this guy was. Or if we did, his music was so good, we just ignored it. Yeah, it, it, was, it was like a joke for a decade. Like yeah. unknown jokes, like we knew what it's like. He pees on kids. This is what he does. Ha ha ha. R. Kelly, and it's like I don't, I don't know, like what flip switch. What you know what I'm saying? Was it just like the Me Too movement? They should have caught him in the '90s when he called himself the Pie Piper. Like yeah. what the Pie Piper? If you look up the story, is that a dude who came into town and lured all the little kids out of town? It was like, like, cause he got rid of the rats. And then they were like, and they didn't want to pay the fee to like get rid of the uh, that he was charging. So he played a song and took all the little kids. It's he like was telling, that. He was telling us who he was, but he, he put out Bump and Grind at the same time. So it's like, all right, like, <laughs> right. creepy, but this music is, is fucking amazing. But what about Timbaland though? Like is Timbaland still going to get off for all like his, you know, you know, Aaliyah, you know, R. Kelly and Timbaland was battling for it. They was both grown. Timbaland don't really get anything for that. He kind of get away with it. I did see like an interview clip. It might have been from like his behind the music where he was saying that he like had a crush on her or whatever. And Timbaland was definitely like 23 at the time. Aaliyah was like 16. Yeah. I mean. Drake, Timbaland, R. Kelly. Dang, what you bro. Do? What you got to get Drake, bro? It's. <laughs> I'm like, dang, you didn't, you didn't want to see this man indicted, but I'm like, geez, <laughs> he said Drake, Timberland, 
Drake. You see, yeah, you see that no. man, Drake. He he bring the little girl on stage. I got my eyes on you. I give you some ice cream. I said, bro, that give me Quagmire vibes, bro. I think that was Bumby's granddaughter. I think <laughs> it's like if I was saying, bro. So look, like when they be making the comments about, you know, a lot of people don't like him because of uh, when he sent that text to, to Bobby Brown, huh? To uh, to Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, bro, like. I don't know. My my only kind of rebuttal to that is, I mean, it is kind of crazy, bro. I, I ain't gonna cap you. It is kind of like, dang, bro. Like, why are you texting her? Because it's like, you don't text any of the the boys her age, you know, to give them the same congratulations. It's always a young lady, you know. <clears throat> but I will I don't say, know, man, I, I don't know with Drake though. Drake, he reached out to, her, you know, that's one of his, you know, things. You know, that kept him alive for a couple of years, and you know, to all the hottest songs. It could be that, like, maybe the dudes just don't post it because, you know, you don't want to seem like no groupie. Maybe he sends a text to most people on the, you know, on Stranger Things, you know? Ain't no telling. But, you know, regardless, I was like, but I be thinking, yo, when he's texting these girls, like, you know, it's like, yeah, they're young, but it's like, bruh, like, he ain't not over here like, yo, so what you want tonight? Like, like, so after, after Stranger Things, you trying to come to the embassy? Like, you know, it's not like he on that type of time. He just be like, yo, like, you doing your thing. You know, it'd be different if he was, like, really hanging out with them. I don't know. That that just kind of, like, my only little thing about that situation. Because people really be kind of overhyping that. But, shoot, man, we hitting about, we had two hours, ain't we? We're past two hours. Yeah, yeah, we're past yeah. two hours this week. Yeah, so I think, you know, it's good time to go ahead and stop because we kind of talk in the circles. So, salute to Drake. I hope, I hope the allegations aren't true, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And, you know, I might, I might, I might have pushed the joke a little too far. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like Drake, if you're listening to this random podcast on on YouTube or Spotify, you listen two hours in because you were so intrigued and not focusing on promotion for your new album. You know what I'm saying? I just want to apologize, bro. For sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I oh, guess. Uh, I'll go ahead and get my social aid. Uh, it's your boy Monos. Uh, find me on Instagram at rbmo underscore underscore. Uh, find me on Twitter at monos underscore. Uh, find me on all platforms as monos. Uh, go check out my new EP. Well, my recently released EP, my recently released single. Find me on YouTube. Uh, got video out, and yeah. Find me on Twitter. Uh, underscore Jelani, J E L A N I, two underscores at the end. Sir. Different color on the gym, but we can be another band. So, everybody, but they been, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out. I, I, I guess I appreciate the shout out. Oh, you, y'all, oh, man. Hey, anytime, man, you know. Mi casa, su casa. <laughs> I was like, bro, you didn't get that one word right, but you got the <laughs> I, I did the LeBron, bro. I did the LeBron. <laughs> but, oh, man, we missed that topic. That was a perfect topic. LeBron reading the, the lyrics off his phone now <laughs> and yeah. being focused. Yes. But uh, RashadMillen.com, you can follow me on Twitter at free underscore Kennedy Carter. Until next time.